Welcome to the Galen Trombley Show. You can find me on Facebook at Galen Trombley, on Instagram at Galen Trombley, and on YouTube at Galen Trombley. Spelling G-A-E-L-A-N-T-R-O-M-B-L-E-Y. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Galen Trombley Show. Uh, welcome everybody, episode uh, 186. Today's a special episode. If you don't like golf, turn this off. Today's a golf podcast. Um, and it's actually the lead up to the greatest tournament on earth, the Masters, um, which is coming up this weekend. Um, not even this weekend, coming up soon. Um, and coming up soon, later this, later tomorrow. Um, that this is going to take place, but the masters podcast, if you guys don't like golf, uh, shut it off. If you do like golf, then welcome. We have, uh, Ryan, Ryan Lee, Jared Burns, um, whoop, whoop. um, average golfers, better guys. So, um, <laughs> good, 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 good dudes. Uh, we're talking all about golf today and we're talking about the masters because we love golf and it's the masters and big story is Tiger Woods. I believe is playing according to his press conference. He said, as of right now he's playing. He did. He said he's playing. So, what do you guys think? And he says he plans to win. Quote, I do. Yeah. The the, the reporter was asking, I don't know which reporter it was, but they were saying, uh, you know, Tiger, you you have always historically said that you, you only play in a golf tournament if you think you can win it. Do you think you can win it? And he just looks deadpan. I do. <laughs> do we? So, if you weren't intimidated before... <laughs> Are we going to get like early 2000s Tiger where he's legit serious? Or are we going to get like Kevin Na walk in the putt Tiger where he throws a couple smiles at the crowd? No, no. I Well, he he's going to be serious. I, I think. You think so? Yes. Yeah, he's going to be serious. Yesterday during his practice, well, at least what I saw yesterday during his practice round, he looked like he was having fun. Like he was kind of bouncing around, ch- chatting, smiling, kind of like taking it all in. His swing looks so buttery right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes ball speed did you see the numbers 176 yeah <laughs> for those of you who don't know what you know the ball speed number and some of you do but like that's that's serious average average golfers 110 uh, is that what ball speed yeah like 120 i think uh that that day we went down to um exit eight you know i think i was getting well i was getting more than that but Say I, what your number was. Okay. <laughs> flex, what was your number? Flex. Yeah, what flex you hard. <laughs> what, what were you getting? <laughs> I wasn't hit. I wasn't hitting in the center of the club face though. So who knows? But it was like one fifty six, one sixty. Ooh, driver. Mm-hmm. It was driver. So, yeah. So like an iron, like a mid iron, like ball speed goes way down. Swing ooh, speed goes I way feel down. Good right now. But like, I was on, getting one thirty. Dri- driver, driver, club speed, club head speed, and. uh Ball speed are usually like on tour. I was looking this up recently because I was really curious about it. And they're hitting like 170 something ball speed. A lot of these guys, they're carrying the ball 300 plus with that. And their swing speed is like, I think so, Rory's top swing speed, look it up, Galen, but I think Lor- Rory's top swing speed was like like 127, 128 or something. Club head speed? Yeah, yeah. club head speed. So. I'm looking at an average right now. A PGA Tour player averages about 168 miles per hour with their driver, and ball speed. Or sorry, ball speed. Two, yes, ball yeah, speed. Rory got his up to 200, and, and that's the speed at which the ball takes off mm-hmm. once off it hits the, the club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then instead of five handicap would be about 147. Yeah, that sounds right. So, um, so Tagger, when I looked at how far a 170 ball should go, this is. Assuming the launch angle is about 11 to 15 uh, degrees, at 170 would go 189. My guess is Tiger's probably launching it right around 11, 11, 12, and it's probably going somewhere close to 300 on the carry. That's what I saw. It on said, the carry. It said it was... With a massive on a, rollout. On a, on yes. A, on the carry, he was averaging on the range this week, like just under 300. Like so he's he, getting- he was about to have his leg amputated can we talk about the fact that his leg was basically destroyed <laughs> and well, now he's months ago. and now he's carrying the ball in the air 
three hundred basically. Just round up his three hundred. And I would like, say wow. is one of the favorites to win. He's the favorite to win. You think the? What's the, what's the bet? Is he who's number what one? What are right? the odds? Ooh, it's got to be Scotty Scheffler, like right? Scotty. I don't know if he'd be the um, what uh, Masters odds. You know who looked really good recently? Tony Finau. Tony Fair. Finau is like the crowd been, favorite bet to win, but it never pans out. But oh, he's always in the top sports, seven. Sports yeah. line. Sports line's the. Uh, I, oh, t- Ram probably Rambo's well, probably up there too. I'm, yeah, I'm seeing some numbers right now. Wait, where is it? Rom's number one. Can I just have a... JT is... That's crazy. That's crazy. Top three favorites are, are oh, okay. Rambo, JT, and then Dustin. Cam Smith. Do you think Rory oh, actually, will ever win a Masters? Yes. I do. Um, wait, so, wait. What this about... Rob, I do you think it. Jordan Spieth will ever mentally recover from the 12? <laughs> uh, he's already got a jacket, though. So John Rom, Justin Thomas... Then Dustin Johnson, Cam Smith, and Scotty Scheffler, your top five. Cam Smith, dude, he might he might win. Cam's it. he's playing well. Him and Scotty are the two best. Well, have been playing the two best. Rory and then Brooks, Patrick Cantlay, Jordan Spieth, Victor Hovland, Colin Morikawa, who I'm actually very He could do something. I think he could win it. And then uh the one the one guy that is a really good golfer right now that we is uh, I always see his name, I think Jared Burns, Sam Burns. Woo. Yes. He's on every leaderboard right now. Yes. He's Sam- sneaky. He's a sneaky PJ Tour winner. Yeah. I forget how many wins he has. He's got a decent amount of wins on the tour. But he's like, you never, like, you just never know the guy's name. And it's like the Sam Burns guy. But he wins all want- those, like, mid level PGA mm-hmm. events. But he'll yeah. be on the leaderboard of, like, the players or yeah. something. But then he's also a guy you couldn't pick out of a lineup. Even though you've seen him on TV, you're like, I still don't know who Sam Burns looks like. Yep. He's kind of like a weird looking face. No offense to Sam Burns, but like a little goatee. He's not listening. Tiger's plus five. How great would it be if more? Well, if it weren't for if it weren't for Tiger, well, let's I ask you this: If it weren't for Tiger being in, who would you be rooting for? Obviously, Phil's out. Rory. I'd love to. I'd love to see Rory, Rory win. Guy, I feel yeah. like yeah. Rory is or the kids. nicest or high Harry profile Hicks. pro. He's one of the nicest. Rory, like yeah. he deserves it, man. But yeah, his, his is plus ten thousand. I would still root for JT. Yeah, I like JT. I love, but JT's got one. He just won one. He just won a green jacket. No, JT. Oh, sorry, Dustin mm-hmm. Johnson. I Dustin was thinking Johnson. Justin. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, JT. I'd love to see JT win one. I would yeah. love to see that. Yeah, Harry Higgs is three times plus thirty thousand for Harry Higgs. I might put a couple bucks on him. I would. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> three thousand. Is there is there, is there any any winnings if he flashes anybody? No. <laughs> Some know, side parlays. You know, you know who's got. The two people with the worst at two hundred and fifty thousand. Kiz, you're just giving money away. Kiz, no, Sandy Lyle and Larry Mice. Mm. What's Kiz's odds? Ten thousand. That's better than I would have thought. Three times better than Harry Higgs. That's surprising because Kiz. My well, um, he just got runner up at the uh, Dell match play. So they're basing it off of that, not how he normally plays at the Masters. I bet you he plays okay. He plays okay. He's a he's a South Carolina Georgia guy. Hmm. It's right in his neck of the woods. He He's also said that he does not play well at the Masters. Nah, it, it's getting a little lengthy there for him. But um, Austin Greaser is a hundred thousand plus hundred thousand. Wow! With a name like that, to be honest, all the guys in the bottom are all the ex champions. What about Taylor Gooch? You, you know is what? Actually, you know what's a, <laughs> You said name like that. That's the only you, person I can think. You know of. what's a kick in the teeth? If you're Stuart Hagstad, who's plus one thousand, and Bernard Longer has better rate, better chance of winning than you. <laughs> Bernard Longer has got some longevity yeah. in golf, though. He's plus 75,000. Jeez. Who's notable besides... Um, well, let's see. Who's who's out besides Phil? Obviously, that's the most notable not playing. I don't I don't know if anybody's not playing. There's a few that are on the outside looking at... Ian Poulter didn't make it this year. Hmm. He just didn't play? Who's not invited? Like, um, Matt Kuchar didn't. I, I saw that last week. Matt Kuchar's, Mrs. Matt Kuchar's first Masters miss in 13 years. Wow. And only a second miss in the last 52 majors. Wow. So he's wow. Out. But I think all the other ones are up there. I was looking at Tiger's Masters um, history. This also goes back to like his his mental like prep. Like If he says he thinks he can win, like he's serious, I think, because he has only missed the cut once. And he had... No, now I can't quote the specific numbers, but I think it was like twelve 
top fives and like 14, maybe 14 top tens or, and he's like only missed the cut at the masters once. Who's this? Tiger. Seriously. So well, when he's in, he's in ni- at 19, the Masters. 1995, he finished T41. He was playing as an amateur in the reigning U.S. Open, U.S. Amateur Champion. Shot 72, 72, 77, 72. So he was only five over on Saturday. Otherwise, he'd been even par. Let me see. This is one of those dumb like... I'll give you a quick trivia question. Hopefully this is right. Who is a former world number one that is not at the Masters this year? Jason Day. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Was that right? Yep. Really? Crazy, right? He seems like he's, he's ever since he, basically once he hit number one, he dropped off. That was, well, he had what year injury. was that? He had a really bad back He injury. dropped off like crazy after that though, and he's never come back. I mean, no. Ricky. Has he won, Ricky's, Ricky's the worst. Ricky's yeah. the biggest drop off, but. Man. Oh, by the way, do you know what Tagger's current world ranking is? 50th? No way. Is he is he like oh, No, I want to hear your guess. Oh man. 50th? That's your guess? That's uh, my guess. He hasn't played in any tournaments. Top 50th make the make the major. I I don't know. I I, I would say 75 or something. I don't know. He doesn't seem to like be that. 973. High. Nine hundred and big crowd for because, the nine hundred seventy third player in the because world. Because he hasn't hasn't played played. Okay, he had a yeah. big crowd though. N- number nine hundred seventy three. There's, a, there's a calculation that goes into that, right? So yeah, okay. Yeah. He's guaranteed. He's not the highest ranked player in the field. Sandy Lyle's got to be higher. But <laughs> wow. But yeah, so ninety six Tagger missed the cut, playing as an amateur again. Seventy five, seventy five. Ninety. Wow. So he missed the cut in ninety six. Came back in ninety seven and won by twelve strokes. Yeah. Wow. He's the type of guy that like when he when he feels like he's down and then he needs to come back and prove something, he does it. So yeah. Last night they were just replaying this and I watched the whole thing. Not the whole thing, the last like two rounds when they went through the ninety seven. Um what the, the crazy thing is how much nicer Augusta National looks now than back then. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, if it's actually nicer, just the T V makes it look nicer, but um, Well the T V definitely has something to do with it. But like the the way the grass was cut and everything just looks nicer. Oh yeah. There was a photo circulating on Instagram showing Bobby Jones putting at Augusta back in like the 30s. In color? And Could they recolor yeah, it? Really? Yeah. Oh, and man, it just cool. didn't look good compared to what it does now. Well, I let's mean, keep, keep in mind too. Like back 97, then it was probably premier standards. Right. 97 Tiger. I mean, those that the clothing was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> the baggy pants and stuff? I mean, it was like parachute that's, pants. That's yeah. where he's wearing the long sleeve sweatshirt, right? And he's got the, the well, so he rolled up. On, right? so he yeah. On the, yeah. Yeah. But what, what you notice, um, he didn't put on the sweatshirt until like the 15th or 16th hole. He had this uh, red shirt with like black, like side panels on the, on the shirt. Um, so it would have been like a red and black shirt had he not had the, the sweater, but then mm-hmm. he won with this red sweater on, which is iconic. But, um, so 97, he wins. 98, it's tied for eighth. Six back of Marco Mira, which is strange that he Marco had that much Mira, of a draw. Wow. Yeah. Um, he was a good golfer. T18th in 1999, nine back of Jose Maria Orthabo. He finished at one over par. Not playing. That's surprising. Wow. Who's not playing? Stinson. Hendrick? Yeah. Really? That, that's probably the most, that might be the most surprising out of that list. Tagger got fifth in 2000, and then obviously he won in 2001, 2002. That's, that's crazy, though, that he, he didn't win more in that stretch from late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, but think about the other majors he won during that stretch. No, absolutely, but 15th, nine back of Mike Weir in 2003, T22nd, so then he won. While you're, chip while you're bringing this up, I ask GT all the time, like, who's your foursome? Who do you want to play with? We've just spent the first 10 minutes of this podcast talking about Tiger, yet Tiger doesn't make his foursome. No, listen, keep going. I'll, I'll tell you. Wow. So, so uh, sorry about this, too. He won in 05, T3 in 06, T2 in 07, second in 08, six in nine, fourth in 10, fourth in 11. Top fives. Sorry, wow. keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Now now you need to explain why Tiger doesn't make your foursome. So you and three other golfers is the stipulation. Three other professional golfer golfers. Jeez. 
No, no. Okay, so this. I don't is, know if I'm prepared to answer that. I need to think about it. But my top, th- if you want to go by, yes, if you had to pick like all time players who would actually play, like legitimately play golf with, I would take Tiger, Phil, and God, I don't know who the third one would be. I might say Rory for me. I've been a Rory guy since he came out back in what oh seven something like that. Um, oh wait. Um, I was saying from like if I wanted to just go out and have a good time, I don't know if Tagger would be like my a buddy top trip. Three. A buddy trip. Like if I just wanted to go out and have like a buddy trip, I'm taking. I think you could with Tiger because he would not take you seriously, and he would just be <laughs> hilarious. He, he might be. Like there's a episode. Did you guys see the Golf Digest thing when he like Tiger goes out and he golfs with like a bunch of celebrities? Like he gives them like nine what? holes and they. You guys oh, didn't see that? Yeah, yeah. It was like kind of cheesy. Wade. It was ca- Wade. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dwayne Wade. Well. Uh, David Spade. There you go. That's the one I watched. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I know I watched a comic. I missed that. Yeah, he didn't. He Tiger looked like he he had a blast with him. Okay, well then, he didn't take well, it that was serious. Also right we should probably practice. separate it into two categories: who would you have fun with versus who would be like your all-time list. If I had to just say like with. go out and watch, it'd be probably Tiger, Phil, and Rory. What about Fred Couples? Nah, no. It's just a different That's, generation. <laughs> that, I loved. I loved watching his swing growing up because it's just. I, I he's went, so smooth. In two thousand nine, I went <laughs> up to Montreal both of you immediately. Nah, two, two, you idiot. Two thousand nine, I went up to Montreal to watch a Champions Tour event, and he was like the headliner with uh, Steve O and uh, Nick. What year? Two thousand nine. I was in college. He was on the Champions Tour by then. Yeah, he's that old now. He was. He was like his first or second. Yeah. God. It was like his first or second year. Sorry, man. So great to watch <laughs> growing up. It was like his first or second. I'm only four years older than you guys. Speaking well, of Fred I, Couples, though, I keep taking tangents but on us, t- but he was playing with Tiger this week. Fred? Uh, yes. Well, so, you see his, and he was commenting on how like so, unbelievably powerful Tiger swing looks. So Fred Couples is, is uh, Tiger's preferred playing partner before the Masters leading up. No kidding. He's one of his preferred playing partners. JT is one of the other ones. No kidding. Yeah. Well, I mean, those are his two of his closest buddies. I mean, Marco Mira was a good good friend of his yeah. too. He had a few. Marco Mira had what? What was that documentary that was on a, a year or so ago? Where it was about Mark Marco Mira talking about. Oh Jesus! Now this is terrible for listeners, but there was a Marco Mira documentary that I watched on Golf Channel. It must have been two years ago now, and he was recapping. Um, his loss, he lost at the end. Was I forget who it was to. This wasn't the Masters. Was Tiger? I can't. He lost to Tiger. I, I can't remember. It's terrible for the, the audio, only, but I think the uh, there was a really awesome documentary. It was it was short, maybe twenty five minutes about uh, Marco Mira, though. Hell of an it, like he is like Royal the Birkdale? standard like every get every guy golfer that just happened to get good. Oh, the final round, nineteen ninety eight. Yes. Of the open, yes, yep, that was it. The open, yeah, Mar- Marco, awesome. Marco Mera, I think, had a couple, a couple majors. I forget what he, he also said, was the like... inventor of the the inventor, but like the claw grip. Mm-hmm. Um, Colin Morikawa said he got the claw grip from him. Let me see. Highest ranked two in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, he won. Well, he won the Masters and the Open in nineteen ninety eight, and then in nineteen ninety eight he got T. Tea... He's had four. Didn't he be? Didn't he wow. be? Um, who was it that beat the shark at the Open? Was it Marco Mira or was? Well, so this is Marco Mira's finishes. His all-time best finishes in majors was he won the Masters in '98, tied for fourth in '98 two majors PGA, mm-hmm. tied for third at the U.S. Open in '98. Oh no, no, sorry, U.S. Open was '88. So 1998, he had three of his four best major finishes. Wow! With the U.S. Open ten years prior. Wow, yeah, Marco Mira was. I mean, I remember him like toward the tail end of his career. Like when I saw him play, like in it was right when we right when we started watching golf. Yeah, he he was like at the tail end. He was getting ready to go on the Champions Tour, but mm-hmm. um, that was back in like the that was like the prime Ernie Els days too. So. I remember getting and my, VJ VJ was just coming on the scene too. My my first clubs I ever got were in 2000, I think, and they were like these like little like junior clubs, but they were tailor made junior clubs. And at mm-hmm. the time, it was like tailor made burner, and the like the top guy was Ernie Els. Like he had just won 
What did he? What did Ernie Els win? Was it the U.S. Open back then or the British Open? He had just won a major. Was it two thousand three? Maybe. Two thousand three seems late. No, because hmm. he won one after that too. Ernie Els, I think, has four majors or three. Hmm. My time frame is all thrown off when it comes to the two thousands. Everything seems like all those all those yeah. players, like the Fred Couples, the Ernie Els, in my mind is is like the nineties, and then like Tiger came on the scene, and then. But no, yeah. they still had a hell of a lot of good wins so, afterwards. So Ernie Els has four. Alec Adnaha is rolling over right now about how <laughs> terrible we are butchering I, I, winners. I know days. I, I invited years. Alec. I never heard back from him. Yeah, but this is so. Alec would shit on us <laughs> with stats. Er, Ernie, the ninety four and ninety seven U.S. Open. So this was okay. The two thousand two U.S. Open or U, sorry, the two thousand two Open. And he also won the 2012 Open. He won the 12? 2012, yeah. He won a late one. So he won four. Did He He must have won wow. on the tour. He must have won on the tour that year then too then, right? Held Royal Litham and St. Anne's. Second clear jug. One stroke ahead of runner-up Adam Scott. Or Adam Scott. Ta- Tagger, Talk about the Brand most, Snedeker, boor- the most boring third. guy in golf. Yeah. The most boring. Who? Adam Scott? The most boring greatest golfer. Adam Scott. Adam Scott. Well, no, I take that back. Who's the Italian guy? Francesco Molinari. Molinari is, takes the cake for the most boring, best yeah. golfer out there. I was going to say Pat Cantlay, Adam Scott's too, but pretty close. Patrick Cantlay at least has a little bit of humor. Yeah. Adam Scott has no... I like anything. Adam Scott. I like him, too, but there's no charisma. Uh, there's more than you think. Francesco, none. Francesco Molinari <laughs> is zero. Who's the most is, boring... boring when, the when most boring Adam golfer Scott? to win. Because Francesco won the Masters, right? Back in no U.S. Open no when, uh, Open the when, Open okay. when he Went when he British. was think about what must have been going through his head when he had the lead in 2019 going into the Masters and then that's it's the true. final day and he's paired with Tiger and ta- Tiger was a few strokes behind him it was Shit. it was him <laughs> Tony Finau and Tiger and well, he wasn't Molinari, worried. he wasn't worried about Tony Finau <laughs> and and, and Molin- yeah so so he's looking at this like okay Tony will be fun to play with but like. Oh fuck! He's wearing the red and black. <laughs> like, like you're about to tee it's off Sunday. on Sunday. You have the lead, and Tiger fucking walks out on the first tee with his red and black, and you're like, and just put yourself in that p- position. Seriously, yeah. like, I'd be shitting my pants. Do you think Tiger even made eye contact? You think you you you, you think it no? Was I'm just pretty like sure all Tiger intimidation. Tiger right was there. just like, this guy is so you, fucking boring. You, <laughs> wait, so you know why? <laughs> I, I actually thought that if anybody won that that tournament that year besides Tagger was Francesco because he was playing so well. That was, was his crushing it. It was that was his stretch like this, where he was just unbelievable. Yeah, he was like, Mr. I, par. All he made was pars and then a sprinkle and a few birdies and he was winning tournaments. Yeah, you're like he's going to shoot a 67 and, or 68. It's and five, four birdies and the rest are pars. Never bogeyed for uh, like a year straight. So th- this was uh, this is from 2011. I think it still carries over to today. It said, what golfer would you put in the most boring force in the follow? <laughs> no way. This is actually a thing. And it actually gets pretty consistent. <laughs> Jim Furyk. The next one oh, I'm going to... Oh, poor one, Jimbo. I like Jim The next Furyk. one I'm going to say yes because I watched him win a major and it was the most boring... The major was fantastic. It was the most boring winner ever. Lucas Glover. Might Ooh, be the top. Yeah. One of the top. Ben Crane and then Justin Leonard. Jesus. I, and then we have Crane. Two of those names I don't even know. Which one? Ben Crane? The ball yeah, guy? I don't know that name. He was I in, probably recognize him. He was in a him. music video back in the day with Bubba and uh, uh, Rick. Oh, Pella. yeah. Remember that? Um, ben Crane. Jo- uh, is it Jonathan Bird? J.B. Holmes and What's... Jim Furyk. Matt Jones, Jim Furyk, Ben Crane, and J.J. Henry. J.B. Holmes, Kevin Na. Kevin Na's not boring now. Webb Simpson, boring. Jim Furyk. Webb Simpson's the other one. David Duvall, Justin Leonard, Paul Goidos, and Justin Rose. Matt Kuchar, Matt Kuchar, Matt Kuchar, Matt Kuchar. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, shucks, attitude all day. Flat, loose swings and no power. Wow. Four Matt Kuchars in, a, in the group. The caddy might actually get paid the normal <laughs> the normal amount. He li- hey, Listen, he learned his lesson. <laughs> oh, wasn't it like pesos or something? He paid him, he paid him heavy. Um uh, so yeah. Bubba Watson plus eight thousand to Two-time win the major. Masters. Yeah, Masters champion. What, what do you What do you think about Bubba Watson going to the drive, chip, and putt every year? Good move, bad move. Go for it. You he's think entertaining. It's good? I, I'm just asking. He go. He's the only golfer I think that goes to the Women's U.S. Amateur and then the drive, chip, and putt. 
Which I think is a cool move as a master champion. I think he also does. I think his. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think his charity has a lot to do with that as well. Like his his primary charity, Drive Chip and Pot, has a lot to do with like kids and um, like women's sports and stuff too. Though his I could wife, be wrong. I believe his wife was a ex WNBA player. I th- Am I, I wrong think, on that? I think you're right, but I think their charity has to do with like children's hospital, kind of like kind of like Jacks. Like mm. they have their own hospital and, and things like that, though. But it's a lot of kids oriented stuff. I think it's good that he goes. Some people some people shit on him though for going because they don't think it's sincere. But I, I think it is. I, mean, I think Bubba, time to go. I think Bubba is the most sincere bullshitter there is. Like he he talks a lot of game, but at the end of the day, he'd give you the shirt off his back. Oh, I thought you were going the opposite way. Like sincere, like not really. Like sincere. he's not. No, I think he's legitimately sincere. It's just the way that he acts. It comes off as yeah. Like, he seems to really care. He, really yeah. care about the game, and he, he really cares about like perpetuating the next generation and keeping kids excited. And I think that's so. probably can, why he goes. So yeah. speaking yeah. about caring about the game, I was listening to this. Can we talk about the fact that the that Augusta let fucking dude perfect? Yeah, I know. On number twelve. So do you know what Dude Perfect is? Do you know what Dude Perfect is? They do all Have this. you ever seen like no. it's like the original like frisbee challenge where they'd go on like a huge building, throw a frisbee, and try to get it into like a basketball hoop. But, like, and then trick yeah, shot. I think so. Trick they'd do shot. all these trick shots, and then it turns stuff into, with like, basketballs too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I haven't watched the video. I refuse to give them clicks. But they went to the Masters. I thought it was a hoax. I completely thought it was a hoax with Bubba. With, well, not Bubba. Uh, no, uh, no, Bryson. With Bryson. Oh, and my they God. went. I'm looking at but it was golf. With all the other sports, it was like throwing a lacrosse ball. It was hitting a baseball bat. Oh yeah, to yeah, me yeah, yeah. that is the ultimate sacrilege. That's sacred ground. <laughs> I was pissed. I'm still pissed. J- J- Jared's uh, his his uh, his slacks are really tight right now. The I, <laughs> I got my panties in a bunch. Is, you don't think it's bad? You that is okay. That is gimmicky. So, it's cheesy. It's, it's cheesy, real cheesy, and I get it. So I was listening to foreplay, and they said they said obviously. I mean, the second it makes tier sense. podcast for the Masters? It makes sense because Dude Perfect has like some stupid amount of followers. They have a so, large audience in YouTube. So it makes sense that you're... But I don't think that's broadening the game of golf. No. Because it's, it's not golf at that point. No. I think what they're doing with, with introducing women's golf to the course is really big. But I also think... I like what what's happening locally, which is it's cool to go out on the course and play music and wear what you want and it doesn't have to be stuffy golf anymore yeah but the masters i like the sweatshirt i like the sweatshirt the sweatshirt I like move. the new sweatshirt i like the new the, J, the jt move the hoodie move yeah you guys who's shit on me last year for wearing a hoodie me you. me i wore a hoodie to the tournament he's like wearing a hoodie to a tournament i'm like I'm cool. it wasn't no, no, cool no, no, no. it wasn't cool yet no no it wasn't cool yet the entire audience <laughs> needs to understand the premise of what's chilled. going on it was about 72 degrees i was chilled it was not even fall yet and I believe it was JT had just worn no Kiz. Kiz had just worn a hoodie that to a not- tournament, and that following tournament, GT shows up <laughs> with a hoodie on, and of course I'm going to give you shit about so, it. I know. So, You're sick. That, but this is also drinking your Pedialyte at the golf course. <laughs> no, I'm wearing your sweatshirt, today. and that was no. his argument. Was it's a little chilly out? It's a little chilly out. So, it was like 70 degrees. So he the- took it off within. I think this was the barracks. It was probably. No, I think no, it was hole was three. Adirondack. Was it so, right so this course ba- doesn't matter. So this is the back. Whole yes, three it was already this is the back- off. This is the background because one, I be- defend this, please. Yes. So one, if anybody, what ever- is the meme? The guy sitting at the table. <laughs> Prove otherwise. With the, the card sign table. Yes. The card table. Yeah. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Prove me so, wrong. Uh, no. So any, if anybody's ever seen me go hit golf balls at a range, I wear a hoodie majority. You of the do time. wear a sweatshirt to the range because I always wear hoodies. Yeah. Like, and I wear hoodies a lot at home. Whatever. So you hit the ball I, straighter. Yes. Fact. Factual. <laughs> Maybe, no maybe fact not. maybe not. no but i'm warmer so then i ended up having this zip up hoodie that i wear sometimes to work and i was here doing some work inside it this room does not regulate temperature well i was freezing you know how people are lying when the backstory gets this long no because i'm giving <laughs> the whole backstory so you see the factualness of this so i'm wearing a sweatshirt I'm trying to be a neutral party here i'm wearing a sweatshirt in this room because it's chilled i also get here early in the morning golf didn't start till like mid mid morning so I walk in 70 degrees outside. Listen, when I walk into this, this office, it was like seven in the morning and it was chilly. So I kept the sweatshirt on. I come into a cold office, sweatshirt on. I leave still chilled, get in the car, drive down. And then I just show up and I still have my sweatshirt on, not thinking anything of it. And then I start getting crap. I did pull it off soon after, but 
It's also at Adirondack where there's not a lot of sunlight right where you first will drive in because there's all those trees by the clubhouse. And then when we end up getting like started to actually drive out, I was like, okay. It's in his hot. defense, I think I wore a sweatshirt the next weekend. <laughs> but it, all right. it wasn't like a it wasn't like a cool pullover hoodie. It was just like a zipped up one, like. Like kids and them, they wear the cool pullover, like lightweight. Those hoodies. new hoodies are sick. They're they real thin mine material. Not, yeah. Like mine's not that thin, and mine had a zipper on it, so it wasn't as cool. Mine, mine looked like Mister Rogers, but it was warm. I love that. That is get the blood flow. Nice. We are slowly eliminating the stuffiness of old guy golf, though. Yes. Like the 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 shitty parts of old guy golf. Like the shoes I got this year. Like the shoes we normally wear are way different than the old saddle shoes. Kevin yeah. showed JT still wears the saddle shoes. A lot of them do. Yeah. But like the like the, the true golf ones I got, but you wear the Puma. You had like the foot joy ones. Yours is kind of cool. Puma, yeah, yours are nice too. The Pumas, honestly, like I had never invested in golf shoes before. I've always bought in like cheap Nikes and, you know, you wear them for a couple Not seasons. Not foot joys? Not foot joys. And, you got to uh, get the foot joys, boy. Well, I I made, there was the first year that I ever went, it, I ever devoted some money to uh, buying decent golf shoes and that made a massive difference. So much more comfortable. It's It's like joy. For your feet. All right. And <laughs> now for this ad read, Ryan Lee. Uh, um, oh, here's the whole thing on tag. Sorry. Foot Joy, please sponsor us. <clears throat> well, speculation you, is swirling as to why, why Tagger wasn't wearing iconic Nikes. So did you hear Did you hear the... Um, the oh, no. You, you gave me the release, right? Didn't he say that they're working on... Nike's still working That's on That's what shoe, he said though. in the press conference. So he's wearing a $200... Roughly pair of Nike. Did you see those new Masters um, foot joys? Uh, Nike cleats for the Masters. Masters cleats. No. Yeah, they're so, sick. So Tagger is wearing. And yes, we're talking about shoes on this podcast about what shoes Tagger is wearing. But this is like a big deal because obviously Nike guy. Um, I mean, it was hard. It was hard to leave Nike but to he, get golf new golf shoes. Like I made it a point. To say, don't worry about the brand. What what's the most comfortable? How many yeah. shoes do you think Tagger tried on before he before he like went with these? Sixty. You think so? He's wearing the same pair. It's just a white and a black pair. The same exact foot choice. I wonder what the difference is. Like why? Well, while you're looking that up, and we're talking about Tiger, one thing that always comes to mind when I think about Tiger and practicing and prep and his his apparel and all this stuff. We've talked about this before that his home putting green Ugh, it's to die for it's got like this massive uh touch screen on the wall that he can like oh it's so crazy just adjust the floor and make undulations how he feels and he wants to practice a certain how much do you think it costs to install that green because he can literally manipulate every square inch of it oh actually to, i'm gonna watch the video right here it's definitely twice the cost of my house <laughs> <laughs> You think it's you think it's that much? Because I think it's no, that, I don't know, but my house isn't worth that much. I think his simulator. I bet it costs a hundred. I bet it costs at least a hundred grand for that. Grand. I bet it's a hundred grand. Um, yeah, it's impressive. I mean, he's got a whole course outside his house. So here's so going back to Tiger. While you're looking this up, historically, what's Tiger need to be going into Saturday? I was thinking about this. I don't know if there's a set. The Masters distance little... from the lead, but I think I don't know. It seems like Tiger. I don't think he can be more than five or six back. I think he plays the course competitively Thursday, Friday, stays in the hunt, but then he loves the chase, like true Saturday, Tiger baby, like a true Tiger. Yeah, but like I think that's his. Stri- I don't think he minus the year he won by the freaking twelve strokes or whatever. I think if you look back at it, he always. He wins the tournament on Sunday. He saves like his energy and his focus and his best golf to really kick it on Sunday. Since new era golf has, has there ever been a plus winner? Has anybody been over par yeah. to win the Masters? Yeah, does uh, uh, Zach Johnson? Was well, pl- oh, that was the year was that plus they... one in 07. That's the year that's they right. tagger proof the course. <laughs> they, that's Don't ask right. me how I know that, but talk about a Masters champion that like. Is more well known in my mind now for like miss hitting the ball, ball, duffing Both it ball. off the tee. It? He did it again the time. The players, yeah, on the 18th hole. That's like, literally something I would expect the three of us to do. And he it's, ricocheted uh, it into like a crowd of people. <laughs> it's it's like, the rule. Um, the official hey, PGA rule is named after him. But 
Oh, is that? Yes. B- by the way, U.S. Ryder Cup captain. Unreal. Could be a good captain. <laughs> I like Zach Johnson. Could be a good captain. He seems yeah. like a nice guy. He's a golfer's golfer. I I uh, I I got his. I actually got his autograph when it, back when I was a kid. Nice. How guy. much is that worth? Huh? Well, now he's going to be a U.S. Ryder Cup captain. <laughs> He's got a role named after him. It just went up. True. So stock went up. True. By the way, two-time major champion at at the Masters and at the old course, St. Andrews. Oh, the Open? Yeah. Wow. He's got two. What? But so back to courses. back to Tiger, though. What do you think he needs to be going into Saturday? Like, like within five strokes, five strokes of the lead? Uh, no. He's got to be minimum, minimum three. Do you think, it's, you think the gap is that narrow yeah. these days? Uh, no, I just think, com- I mean, I think if someone's within five, they have a shot because it's so, it, the the Masters is, uh, someone can get on a heater that last day. And just I also feel like it. on Saturday, there's so much movement. The Masters is one that like you can just spin a top at the beginning of Saturday, Sunday, and like you don't know where it's going to end up. Right. Because there's going to be. People get know, hot on Saturday. I, I think the bigger question is, do you think it's going to be. Like, do you think it's going to be a congested leaderboard going into Sunday, or do you think there's going to be a one or two kind of pull away? I bet it'll be congested. Because there's some days you go in and there's like four guys tied for the lead, or two, one guy with the lead, four guys one behind, and then it's like a, a you know. Well, but you could was, go in and someone's got like a, you know, Louis Usazen. Um, he did Louis a couple Usazen, times. Like, yeah. all of a sudden you get someone that's at four or five Mr. stroke lead. Mr. Choke himself. Well, Rory did a couple years. I mean, he, he ended up bombing, but. A lot of those guys are playing, well. It's I, not the same tournament, but the the last last weekend, the leaderboard was first, and then there was like two or three guys, I think, and second, and then it quickly jumped. It was so congested, like the next was like a bunch of ties for seventh, and then a bunch of ties for like fifteenth, and like mm-hmm. it was like there was no tie for third, or there was no third, fourth. It was very congested at the yeah. top. So I, I, different course, different tournament, but. Seems I, like that energy will probably carry forward, I think. I would say Tagger has to be within three on Sunday. On Sunday? With it, like teeing off Sunday, within three. I was say, yeah, I'm just saying Saturday, probably five back. Should be good. I think within five, yeah. I think if he's five, he can make a couple strokes. What do you think the chances that there's someone that has a three or more stroke lead going into Sunday? Oh, probably 50-50. You think it's so? It's happened pretty regularly. I, I don't know because th- three being three clear is I think a pretty substantial lead in a major going into the final day. That's a good point. I think one or two, it's like it's, it's within. You know, what I mean, like two is not the end of the world. Guy could you could shoot one under and still lose it. You know what was sort of. Hideki up um, when he won? He was last up, year. Yeah, I don't think he was up a lot. Was he? Because it was him and JT, right? JT was JT was in the top of the leaderboard leading into the Sunday, and I think he fell off that day. Wasn't he grouped with? Let me see, Masters. Hideki you mean had, going into Sunday? Going into Sunday, I'm pretty sure they he was in the in that top group, and I think he fell off. I could be wrong. Um, I, I might be misremembering it. Actually, Hideki was plus one last year in the final round, and still won. Yeah, so he must have been over up. over Will. Zalatoris? Yeah. Was JT in that group, though? I don't... Uh, man, it's, it's tough it, to see... It's hard to find those stats. Well, like, I, I mean, Jay... Well, you're talking about Justin Thomas? Yeah. Uh, he's not even... Justin Thomas finished... No. I'm pretty sure he... No, he was tied for 21. He was even par on the day. On, I'm pretty... He was even par on Sunday, though? No, he's even par overall. He was 10 strokes back. I'm pretty sure he fell apart on the last day. No, he shot same as Hideki, 73. So if he shot the same as Sadeki, he was ten strokes back going into the finals. No, he, there's no way he was in the final round or <laughs> final. Uh, Jordan Speed, maybe. Maybe that's who it was. Jor- Jordan shot seventy to finish at negative seven. Yep. There's Xander Shoffley who had a chance to win it. He put the ball in the drink on number sixteen. Um, you know who I really think is going to have a shot at winning it's Cam Smith. For some reason, I could see Cam Smith just was like, Cam Smith in it last year. Uh, got tenth. And he got second the year before. I think he's only played it a few times. Hmm. Actually, I want to say he's played it five times. I think I saw that yesterday. Cameron Smith, Masters. I, I think Cameron's... Do you think the pressure of every knowing that, like, let's say 
you're in the final group with Tiger. You've got the lead or you know you're in it. You know you're playing good golf. You know you're capable of winning. Do you think the pressure of not only just playing against Tiger, but also like knowing that pretty much every fan out there watching wants tiger to win Mm -hmm. and like you're the you're the nemesis like that day 100 percent. like how the heck do you win a tournament when you know that's the i think the cloud over the top of you like i think these guys are so hyper competitive that that would probably what there's probably some exceptions i wonder who those people are but maybe kids i don't know because he likes to have a good time but i think those guys those guys are competitive so competitive that they would feed off of that like yeah, fuck, fuck that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the one that beats Tiger on Sunday. E- even when a guy like a Harry Higgs, who I think is just like the, the easiest going guy in the world, when you see him get competitive and talk, you can tell he's got that edge. Like when you start talking about stuff and struggles, like I'm still trying to beat you. Like they just, they just have that. Like they just They're turn so it up competitive. Enough. So Cam Smith, last five Masters, T55, T5, T51, T2, T10. Wow. He's he's got a chance, dude. Scoring I remember watching 71. him last year. He's when he's on, he's on. He's that's, hard to that's beat. The thing. He, he keeps low. his composure too. You can see it. He's got a game face. Yeah. By the way, as I think of, he's doing he's easily top ten this year. As of right now, VJ and Fred Couples are Which teeing are? off on Thursday. At the Masters. VJ and they're yeah, like Fred couples doing the old guy thing before everybody. I don't know. They're teeing off together though. <clears throat> oh, like in the, as like a pairing. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant just. <laughs> they're playing. They're playing. <laughs> yeah, they're playing do, do that we day. Have have they come up with the pairings yet? It looks yes. like it. It looks yes. like it. I'm yes. Looking at them right they here. have Tiger's pairing. I saw it. Tiger's oh. paired up. Well, I'm looking with... at it right now. Yes. Group one: Jose Maria Orthago. Kiz is paired up with Bryson. <laughs> Okay. They're, not, they're not gonna walk together at all during that day. Um oh dude. Oh no, I, he's not paired up with Bryson. Sorry, Bryson's J, up with Paul Casey. That's JJ a good Spawn is playing with Jose Maria Othabo. He he's just playing with week. Tiger's playing with Louie. Well, that'd be fun. And uh was it Neiman or is that who he was with? Or? Oh and Neiman. Oh, oh okay, that's a yep. Okay, now we're getting into the groups with Yep, there we go. Yep, he's playing with yep with Neiman and then Fred Couples is playing with Garrett Kigo and Gu- uh, Guido. Migliozzi. Oh yeah, I know that guy. Scotty's paired up with <laughs> that guy from Italy. Italia. Scotty's paired up with Adam Scott and Tony Finau, though. That'll be a fun group. That's to a watch. good group. Which yeah. one's that? Uh, Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau, and Adam Scott. As much as I don't like Adam Scott, he is. Good. Brian Harmon playing well right now. Did you guys listen to the uh, podcast with Foreplay and interviewing Scotty? No, I saw some clips. Dude, what a down to earth dude. Seems like a class yeah, act. Yeah, he sounds like a good dude for sure. Yeah. He uh he was on the the where was it last night the live from the Masters which has been playing nonstop for me since yesterday um but he ended up doing this thing and they're like hey has anything changed for you um not sure the world number one he goes he goes no he goes actually the kid that picked me up called me Xander so that brought me down pretty quick <laughs> <laughs> so I was like that's I'm like touche he's pretty good though he's just like easy going he's like no nah, nothing's changed so I I would love to see him win. Heck he's, yeah. He's got to be. Heck yeah. We talk about like... What if Will Zelatoris won? Uh, oh, Max man. Homa. Gilmore. It's a, that's, a good, that's a good grouping, though, that first day. It's, it's Rom, Zelatoris, and, and Patrick Cantley. Max Homa, Kevin Na, and Shane Lowry. I like that group, too. Oh, Kiz is playing with Berger and Fleetwood? Oh, he is? Yeah. I missed that. That's not a bad little group for Kiz. 10.20 a.m. Eastern Time. This is when I got to start figuring out. I love how we act like like Kiz is like our boy too, just because he's like the four play guys boy, you know. Yeah, That's I, funny. I just, he's just any guy that seems got like a root regular for that human. Guy. Yeah, Bryson, Cam Smith, and Paul Casey. What 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 were you looking at for tea times? Like all the tea times you gave me were like no, they're right there. Oh, see, I have them as their pictures. Like oh, see, them. I just have the names. So you're going like everyone you were saying is like Kisner's with the guy below him. Yeah. Bryson, Mister. Par 67 or whatever the heck he said. So Taggers with Louie and Joaquin. That's a good little matching, though. Joaquin, Joaquin just, Neiman's. He just won Taggers tournament, too. Yeah, he's playing good golf. 1034. Damn it. Wait, this is Thursday, right? Okay. So Friday, they're in the afternoon. So I just got to prep on James Piot. I'll be on the golf course watching it on my phone. Are you? 
Yep. Friday? What a in time. Florida. Oh, that's right. On vacation in Florida playing During golf while watching the Masters. Like, this time. What a time perfectly. to be alive. Jeez. What a time. What? Wait, so Hideki's the, the former champion. Yep. Dustin. No, but then that. he played with James Piot, who must be the amateur champion, because they usually pair them together. Right. And Justin Thomas. What is Justin Thomas? Don't they usually take... Favorite a- to win. No, but they usually... Don't- <laughs> yeah, but don't they usually take the British uh, Open champion and put him in that group? He won... Or is it the... He didn't win the players. I don't know. Who- I don't know how they pair that. Because if that was the case, they would put... Uh, they would have put uh, Colin there. Right? My- or am I thinking that the wrong way? Yeah, he hasn't... Yeah, JT hasn't won... A major in a while. Lucas Glover. Man, how is Lucas Glover? Is he still playing on exemptions? Eric Van Ruin. The joggers, which I love, with the mustache. <laughs> the mustache is a gutsy move. Um, you know, I always get screwed up with Cam Smith, though, is Cameron Davis. Cameron from Australia. Yep. But I don't know how good he... Let me see. I mean, some of these, Matt, some of these are pretty good. Gary Woodland, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the Wilson flat brim hat. It's goofy looking. It is. Corey Connors isn't playing well from from Canada. Lee Westwood, I love. I would love to see Lee Westwood. Lee win. Westwood. Lee Westwood might be. He Good was dude. in the hunt at the open, right? He's been play, he played well last year in a couple a couple tournaments. Yeah, I'd love to see Lee Westwood win. He's another guy that if you listen to some of his interviews, he's he's very much like Scotty Scheffler. Like the European version of Scotty Scheffler. He's yeah. just kind of like, hey, you know, I, I played well. I didn't, but, you know, I just played like three hours of Rummy Cube with my wife. So, like, Lee Westwood good, can you know? play as much Rummy Cube as he wants with his wife. His wife's a smoke show. Um, By the way, I had never heard of Rummy Cube until like three months ago and I bought it and I played against my wife. We talked about this. You and Lauren. Oh, played. my God. Do not play Rummy Cube with Lauren. She. We should let. Well, first of all, she'll probably kick your ass. But if you actually win. She will kill you. I should just let so her and Gina play each other. Gina and Lauren that should like a face bad, off. That sounds like a bad idea, guys. Actually, dude. You want to do that and go golfing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set them up with like we a We might long... be able to fit in 36 holes. <laughs> Set them up with a long game. Seriously, played, they will, they will go. Played, have them play Risk. <laughs> oh, my God. So, they'll play Rummy Cube all day probably because what happens with Lauren, I don't know if this happens with Gina, but she gets addicted she wins a couple but then if i win one it's like no gotta, i have to i have to bury, bury you <laughs> i have to bury you the, so then she's like addicted she's got to get two more wins and then she'll keep going and going and going i'm sure gina's just like that yeah she got mad when i beat her um, <laughs> lauren gets real mad when i beat her it doesn't happen as often like she's she, lost the competitive we don't play games together as much anymore mm. we don't often but i bought that because i'm like let's just try it we played it when how was office trivia that you bought never played it yet still have really? to no, been we sick. should bring it, bring it here. We'll play it together. We, we had one that we played, and I I did well. I think I got three quarters of the questions right, but some of them were specific, man. Some of them were like, "Dude, I have money at office trivia." You you'd beat me. <laughs> you would beat me because you I have an office like, office trivia well, calendar, daily calendar. Yeah, I have the same one. Oh, okay, what what? Year, what day are we on in the year? I've but, missed four questions I don't so far. Remember. Oh, we're but like that's impressive. In? Are we hundred? Yeah, we're over hundred in. So I'm ninety six for no. We're closing 96. closing in on hundred. Then I'm close to ninety six for hundred. Wow, that's really good. <laughs> well, Stupid. what's January anyway. 31, 28. Yeah, we're oh, hundred days. Probably a couple of weeks from now. So just to shine some more light back on golf for a second, Ryan texted the three of well the two of us and said that we should consider entering the amateur. Uh, whatever it was qualifier up in Malone. And he said, I think it only takes an 8.4 handicap to get in. And my response immediately was, wow, Ron, I love you. I appreciate this. The fact that you think I can get down to an 8.4 handicap. I think it's possible. Do you I think in, you can be in the single digit? Well, Ryan, you can be in the single. Digits. Okay. So I went in Do immediately. We can all I, be in the single digits. This I year. nerd, I nerd out on this stuff, but I went in and I I'm actually like plugged in right now. I plugged in my you scores. If, you asked if I could. I'm terrible. You asked if I could. Sorry, Ryan. Go. It's, we'll it sucks. <laughs> it's it's not a true representation because freaking the barracks and Adirondack, for whatever reason, don't register. 
So you, if you play a score oh, they at don't. both no. of those courses, they don't count towards your USGA handicap. The Barrett should, should which count. is or ridiculous. Or it's or probably something stupid. Like they don't keep their they membership up. Yeah, they don't pay for something. They're cheap as hell. Sorry, I'm just saying that because it, it's true. Hey, but facts hurt. Hey, yeah, facts hurt. But you know, just do yet, what you so need to do for your <laughs> for your players. But or your whatever. But <laughs> you mean the future of golf? You mean so people that I, are under I the I age plugged of sixty seven? I plugged in all that, that of my make, that will that win tournaments, but don't get credit. Boys, listen to this. I plugged in my scores that I had. There will saved. be black marks on the green. Black footprints. I. I Good lord. My, sorry. <laughs> There's <laughs> that's science. Science. Don't mess with science. Science. Keep going. Keep, keep science. Sorry, so, I, it comes with an app. I became a member of New York State Golf Association. Found a bunch of our friends on there actually because I was just curious if they were in there. And you can look people up. Legend Rob Whedon. He's in here. Is he? Oh yeah. Let's see here. Uh, wait. Shit. Here we go. Okay. Friend of the four. What do you think tournament? he is right now? Um, hold on. Six. Hold on. I got I got a bunch of people saved here. Mm, a bunch of our friends here. We got five, five. Uh, Rob Whedon, 3.4. Wow. Galen Trombley, 12.3. That a boy. I, I can get... Uh, yes, keep going. Cody, Ro- get Cody Roberts, plus 1.2. <gasps> oh, from North? Yeah, Cody's a very good <laughs> Wow. Player. Yeah. What about uh, Bryce? Bryce was like a Bryce two last yeah, year. Yeah, I looked up are Bryce. They, I are all these see... guys on that New York PA yeah. thing? Yeah. Uh, oh. Bryce uh, had Bryce registered as a 4.2. Honestly, wow. we should use this for, for the kids. It's, yeah. it's is Alec up. on there? It's, I did not. Or is Alec not registered? No, Al- Alec. No, Alex, he's got a handicap. His his home uh, course is down somewhere down downstate uh, Albany, right? Or downstate New York? I, I searched Alec and it doesn't come up, so maybe he's uh, lapsed no, his had... membership or something, but... Let me see. I had it for. Do we have uh, to be Steve, members Steve-o? at North Country? Stevo, no, no, five point one. one no, so had. so what you do, and and Rob Whedon is a good example here, and this is the club I'm part of. It's oh, just right. the yeah. New York State Golf Association NYSGA E Club, and then you register with the Adirondacks, oh. and that is your that is your official what's club. The, what's the cost to do this? It's like hundred bucks. Yeah. No, yeah, way less than that. You're dude. right. It was like it's, uh, 45. 45 bucks. Yeah. It's totally worth it. Um, so so here's what I did. I went in and I I was just curious. I registered, I logged in the rounds I had saved at North Country and Bluff, because those two count. Uh, I had a 91, 87, 81. Uh, I did have a 79, an 89. Um, a couple other scores mixed in there, but. It's got me at a six. No. Six? That sounds about right. So what I'm saying is... You're that, at six? That's really... That's not my... Don't say that out loud. I just registered you for a tournament at an 11. Well, it's... <laughs> listen. I, you won't be the only all, one. All I'm saying is, this is really interesting to me because... Alec is seven. I think the way we've been... I think we all understand the handicap system really well. But I think when we generate handicaps for ourselves arbitrarily Mm -hmm. we might be estimating a little high because this is official and and i think like we've talked about max homa if you plus 7.6 he actually puts there's only a couple golfers oh really 7.6 holy so so i think you know it takes your lowest round ever right and puts the most weight on that but then it also does an algorithm around like recent rounds that you've had and If you blow up one day and log a 90 doesn't whatever, it doesn't weight it as much because the purpose of the handicap is to weight against your potential, right? Of your average potential. And so I think my got, best my best I round think ever. You guys with a little extra effort could probably with some work. I think I think Yeah, I'm a 12, 12 3. Yeah, I think I think it could happen. I don't know. So, so the thing is with my scores last year. Wait, August. is that Sorry, crazy? I'm, Am I, I crazy? I I'm, feel like it's possible. I'm registering for the E Club right now. Yeah, no, but, but look like, at this: 85, 86, 88, 81, and then I went like you can see my scores were higher, and then as I got to the end of the year, like all my scores started trending down. Right. So like I ended up getting to a twelve. My Highest was ninety six. My lowest was an eighty one. My average is eighty seven point nine. So, 
It puts me at 12. And it's saying... When Ryan said best score ever, so I text... I don't know if you were on this text chain. My best score ever? So I don't know it if you're my, on this... a, my average is an 84. It's giving me a 6. Wow. And you, mine's about 87, 88. Average doesn't equate to your handicap, though. No. So many people think that, well, I average a 90. Well, that's so what I was handi- saying, yeah. yeah. So my handicap should be 18. No. Right. Not even close. No. Yeah, if you're averaging a 90, your handicap should be like a 14. My, my average is 16. So over. what I'm saying is we need to get out there. We need to get you boys playing. So, and we all need to post a nice low score so we can qualify and go fucking do a terrible job but have a fun time playing at in Mulan. the qualifier to qualify for the <laughs> against really good golfers. That'd be fun. That, that would be, be fun. fun. Even if we when, when's a tournament? <laughs> it's in July drink? or <laughs> it's in July. Are we to I think up? they give you a cart too. Be like, you boys aren't here to win, are you? Be like, no, we're just nah, we're here to have fun. But you know what? When we have fun, but we're flexing because we we're best here, golf we play which means our handicap is a certain. We play loose, yeah, yeah, loosey goosey, baby. I remember when I hit the only time I've ever hit an eighty was in my hometown. I text a group, and I don't know if you were. On I was GT. on it. Ryan was definitely on it. <laughs> it was so I good. instead of people being like, "Wow, dude, good job, great job," whatever, not a single person said good job. The first text back was from Ryan. And it was followed up with really like one more putt and you could have broke 80. What the fuck? Yeah. Like I was like, I was like, wow. I think it was something like reflect on your round. Like all you needed was to like <laughs> hit one more like putt. One less. Meanwhile, like I'm one chipping in stroke. off the green. You know an 80 like, is the same as an 89. It's all the 80s. <laughs> Just that like one <laughs> putt would have been. You know, it all really you, is like I hit an eighty, but it's not. It's like it's like oh man, uh, like all you can't you think of just one time where you really you should have. I don't think I've ever one played viewership. better golf than that. And I was on <laughs> cloud nine, and one text message brought me right back to fucking reality. <laughs> That's nice. Like I said, shot in the eighties. So um, <laughs> I, the fuck I, up. I mean, I haven't broken eighty in a decade. So I've never broken eighty. That was I've. It's gonna happen. This was this the year. year. That was it's the gonna oh, happen this year. That was the yeah. year after I broke ninety for the first time. I, oh, I shot an eighty nine yeah, the year before. You're playing more now, and you're starting to understand Not the swing last a little year. Bit more last now. year I didn't play as much. You're starting to understand the swing. Yeah, if you're trying to adjust it, uh, I'm just holding on to it. Just I tighten it. It's kind of like the no, old I'm shit good. bar. He just okay. doesn't know where this conversation's going. I um, just, just I have a <laughs> habit. I think a hitch. <laughs> if I can find the fairway more consistently. Set I will. Every call I will. Forever. I will maintain that. I will maintain yeah. that. But that's you know. What do you think? What, said every golfer. I bet. Ever. I what bet. I could. The weakest br- part of your game is driver. My game. My game. Oh my! My game varies. <laughs> it really does. For it's, Ryan, it's little, it really depends does. on which putter he puts in the bag. But um, well, I'm feeling really good about the two ball that I uh, dropped some pretty long, crucial putts against both of you fuckers last year so True. i mean my, i'm gonna keep that in the bag for a while True. probably my chipping game is the worst part of my game you know what's really weird though is the trend Just this is it, baby. It, it sounds it sounds really stupid but i i was convinced that because everybody has the big fat wide putter grip that i needed the big fat wide putter grip and i took it off and i put it on that two ball and like it's just it's i have a i have a tiny thin pistol grip now and it's like really Everything about that putter so like feels better? right. Yeah. So the everything, putter, it's weighted that, right. Yeah. The the everything about it feels right. And I don't know what it was, but when I was holding uh one of those wider grips, like I'd get like yippy with my putter. It was really bad. One thing that I noticed that I don't like because I tried two years ago. I tried the super stroke. Like I tried in uh, multiple widths, and then I went over to the golf pride one. And the Golf Pride one at the top, it, it yeah, na- the red it, and yellow, red and yellow. Yeah, so I have it, that one it too. It narrows towards the bottom, which feels like it fits your your right, well, your left hand, my right hand a little bit better. But then it has a slight hitch towards mm-hmm. you at the top. The pistol just, grip, yeah, it feels way more ergonomic than like the the traditional. You know, I putt for years with the stock old Odyssey grip from the from the early two thousands. Yep, and switching to a fatter grip made a massive difference from a putting stroke standpoint. The thing that I, I know GT, you just did it. I'm very seriously considering switching from the mallet to something more blade like to this, a mallet from no, so, sorry, from the blade to something more like the spider putter that you have. 
I have a two ball, but I love it. I, you got a spider, mm-hmm. a spider GT. Spider GT. <laughs> yeah. Coincidental, but, but yeah, yeah, it was. No, uh, I think it's. I, I think the weight of the putter, especially with a mallet, because none of us actually hit the putter like right in the center every time. No, it I don't have just doesn't mark. happen. But like when you hit it off a smidge, the weight of that whole putter holds the face like closer to where you want it to be. So, so I feel f- like that's the hardest part is keeping the face consistent. Yeah. Well, so when I was doing, of course, I was doing research before we went, like face balance, putter, all this stuff. So like most of the stuff the kid was telling me when we were there, like I already knew a little bit. It was just more of like I wanted to actually see it. And um, originally, because I was going in, I'm like, I'm going to probably get a mallet because it's, at the end of the day, mallet's more forgiving than a blade. And then the problem. Unless you talk to Tiger. Yeah. So I've always had a blade. It's cheating. I've always had a blade putter. <laughs> and. The pro- the biggest issue for me is not even like the- it's just keeping the stroke. Now, granted, my blade putter was extremely light relative to a lot of putters, and just adding the extra weight, it almost felt more of like weightless. Like I could let the putter just kind of like do the use work. momentum. Yeah. Where I found with my putter, I had to actually kind of guide it with my hand, so it was a lot of feel. I steer with my right hand. Yeah, it, and- in order to keep the putter perpendicular and i'm a very yeah. streaky putter because i can be very good for a, a round and then i can get really off because and a lot of it is just because it's such a feel thing yep um that i'm like if i can get something like this and i can really just line it up and just let the putter you know really just kind of let the weight use itself so i'm curious to see how it will go but my grip i went to a thicker grip partly on my last one on my blade putter Partly because it kept my hands quieter, like softer. Yep. So I could have a little bit more, like less kind of, uh, what's the word, like steering with my hands. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt that the putter was too light really to get a lot of feedback on the putt. And I I have probably swung a, a mallet putter, in my, like a true mallet putter in my life, five times, like ever. Like I've never used probably one. Probably at, mo- at most. And that's like grabbing someone's putter or something yeah. at like a Dick's Sporting Goods. Like I never, I've never putted with a mallet. So once I started actually swinging it, I'm like, this is actually way easier. It was like night and day. So that's why I ended up deciding on it. And even when I was trying out putters that day, the blade I was still fi- finding, I had to like, I had to manipulate it more with my hands to keep it yep. online. And so the new blade or the new mallet came to stock with like the same type of grip, just the thinner grip. And I've just kept it on there and I don't mind it as much, but I find the weight down below it's enough to keep my hands fine. I think I there's something about, yeah, like I think that's what it was for me. I think it's like the more weight you have in the, the head of the, the putter, mm-hmm. the less you need that grip to be wider, to quiet could, your could hands be. because yeah. I think you're just letting that thing like I do its own it's thing. Like but pendulum. like it when it's a lightweight blade putter, you need the wider grip to keep your hands from, I com- from, from, I completely agree. It's yippy it's or make your hand, you know, like you said, it's so, like, uh, I would describe it as like circular rotation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with, when you have that blade in your hand, you're, I, I find that I'm way more concentrate. I concentrate way more on making sure that I'm not rotating the club than it is taking a nice stroke back and forth. Exactly. But when I threw that, that spider in my hands and then I think this was the other, the, the new spider that they put out. Grip doesn't matter um, as much. The grip, it, it, it was a know. narrower grip. But it felt like it was more of a just all I had to do was take it back and put it forward and that that face made good contact. Mm -hmm. So as much as I hate to, I mean, I own game improvement clubs. I'm a freaking 14 (laughs) handicap. You're not Tiger Woods. Get over it. Until we figure this out and then we plug you in and you're actually like an 11 or 12 like GT. Yeah, and yeah. then we're like, oh, he's only a few strokes away from qualifying for the qualifier. I played like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get hats like that. I'm here to qualify. Qualify for, for the I qualified qualifier. for the qualifier. Bro- uh, barely break, barely breaks ninety. Um, qualified. <laughs> your is video. your is your putter face balanced or toe balanced? Toe balanced. Same. Yeah. Mine is toe balanced also. What's I like the that better. Between toe balance, is that because you take more of a pendulum swing at the if ball? I have a um, I have a spider arc. at home. That's, yeah, I don't take an arc um, at all. Face well, balanced. And it actually, that was the moment I realized that I actually do prefer a toe balance, a toe weighted putter because you're opening and then closing. It literally, the you, you talk about a mallet that feels so natural going straight back, straight forward. The, the face balanced, it's like you can't fuck it up. If you're trying to go straight back, straight forward, it's that's and my when you hold stroke. it, when you hold it out, the mallet stays perfectly level with the ground. The face of it does. Face points. Whereas, yeah. Whereas, if you have a toe balanced putter, 
the toe hangs down at a certain degree depending on how much it's weighted and like most uh most blades are they're pointing down like 45 degrees yeah if you um I've, i think i've told you both about trotty yeah yeah trot like he's a wizard he does a comes, putter one too um so many of them yeah he goes right into all the face balance but basically the toe the, the fact with the toe is because the toe balance is there's less weight in the toe okay so as you swing the toe can close faster because if you have more weight in the toe, See, you know the, what I mean? I, I understand that. The problem is I've spent so many years making sure that I'm taking a, a – there is literally as little as possible opening and closing of the face. I've I've been working for years on a straight back, straight through. So that's why I think a face-balanced putter is way better suited for me because I literally take yeah. – you know, if you drew the line – I take it straight back and through, and the club face does not. I I work hard to make sure the club face doesn't ever open or so, shut. So what I so I was watching a video. Um, so it sounds like a mallet putter would so, be significantly so for, better for me. For Scotty Cameron, there was a there was a, a video of Scotty Cameron talking about it that every putter because USGA is regulated to have at least ten degrees, I think, a forward loft on the shaft. It, there has to be an arc, but he goes a lot of it is like you basically it's less arc versus more arc. So the less arc putter is going to be a face balance. The more arc putter, I might go balance. Buy it. <laughs> so, so we're shopping for putters here while you're talking. So the the low the I am going to add it. To so the I, I would say if you have a fairly low arc, you would be doing a face balance putter. Yeah, and the face balance, I I tend to swing more with an arc, which but my In which the, is weird because they, when you how when do you, they dictate that? What's the like? What's the number mean? Uh, not to sound like an idiot, what but you know how like. Like our white hots, there's a number one, there's a number two. That's the um, is that's that the core? The, that's the model. That's just the head model. It's just the model. I don't okay. think there's anything. I didn't more know than if that. that that dictated if that's how they in, indicated which which was which. No, because the one and two both are toe balanced putters. They're just different. They're different hosels basically, and different head shapes. Mm-hmm. So like when you start getting the head shapes and the hosel shapes, it ha- has to do with also the way it releases the putter. Okay. So the one I have is like a slightly. And mine's a number. One, which one? The Odyssey. Yeah, one. Mine's number one. That's the one I have, which is just a standard L. It probably makes drop. sense why I, why I have such an issue with my putting stroke versus because I'm like you, I'm super hot and cold. Like I can go. It's probably really well. You have a toe balance putter, and you're trying to manipulate it straight back and straight. Oh, hundred percent. So if you had more of an arc, you would close. That's probably what it is. This is the thing that I've learned the last like two. Like when I used to play golf a long time ago. I bought clubs and I didn't really understand much about golf. Like I, we would play golf, but like the science behind it, you just go and be like, Oh, I'll hit this iron. Cause I know it like has more loft. Like it's just, we didn't know enough about it. And then in the last couple of years, I've been researching like the different weights, the different shafts, the different, um, the way you can manipulate like the grinds on wedges. Now putters, mm-hmm. like when you start to really get behind the science of everything and realize what's best for your game, like the gapping of yardages. Like I changed my, my wedges, um, I dropped the lofts in my wedges to make up for the gaps in the yardages. Now I just bought the new irons that are going to be my, they're stronger lofted. So, which I was researching on that. The stronger loft is also because of the way the center of gravity was moved back. So I right. have to do it the balance. Mm-hmm. So some of you are like, well, it's just, lo-. they just, it's easy to hit them farther because you put the loft up, but it's kind of like Bryson. Like, cause the center of gravity and his club head speed, he has to really dial his lofts strong because he, otherwise he's going to balloon up too high. Because you're trying to hit certain windows. I screwed with that at the at the driving range two days ago. I changed the I changed the loft on my on that new Sim Two driver. Yeah, and was just messing around with it, and it it made a big difference in obviously how high I hit in the air, but it actually made a bit of a difference on how much the ball was cutting too. Would you did you open or did you when you change the loft sleeve? What's your natural loft? What's standard loft, and what did you change it to? Well, I used to, I, my old driver was a 10.5. This new driver is a nine and I, I brought it back up to a 10.5 and it was just shooting way up through the air, but because it's, it this new driver is weighted in the back, it's got an extra 25 grams that they added to the back. So what, but where were you hitting? Or was the or that 25 grams? Jesus. What is, what is that? 25, 2.5 grams, 2.5 grams. That they was was it back. going left or right? Right. When I, when I upped the loft. So when you up the loft on that, if you go from a 10 to a 10 or nine to a 10, five, you actually close the face. So in theory, it should help you draw the ball better. Hmm. That's strange. Because what it does is it brings the loft up, but it also closes the face slightly. So if you drop it, if you go down to like an eight or something like that, which would be whatever, two, two clicks. Remember how earlier I said, what's the worst part of my game? 
yep. driving. So but if you were to drop the lop, though, and keep it less, you would actually be opening the face. So you'd be lower flight, a little more like left to right kind of mm-hmm. cut. And then, so my, mine, like when we went there, we moved all the weights to the, the heel, but we kept it at the standard um, nine. So I, have, I play a nine, or we'll be playing a nine with weight in the heel. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's what I'm going for. Oh, he um, just he just purchased a spider. From did the, you? Yes. He's going to go pick, pick it, it up later. And if I don't like it, I'll I'll return it when I get back. When did you get it? Oh, at Dick's? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Not about it. You picking it up today? Yeah. Wow. Which one did you get? Let me see. Just the old spider. Well, it's the, that's the... Not the I, GT? I bought a driver. No, I'm not going to spend it. Did you? We're coming clean right now. What'd you get? I haven't bought... Sh- I took it to the driving range too and I... What'd you buy? I was piping it. <laughs> Callaway? It's a Callaway, isn't it? It is a Callaway. I knew it. Yeah. How did so, I know it was? Is it, I is tested, it the Rogue? I tested a, oh. a Callaway uh, speed... Remember when my driver broke? Yeah. I was testing he uh, who must not be named yeah i was borrowing a callaway uh epic is that the right balance callaway yeah. epic speed um that's what you got from the from the pro shop oh, the at ep- bluff the epic the epic the new epic yes, not I the rem- first epic but the new epic it's you? like the one pr- prior to it's a year it's prior to the rogue yeah, yeah. so i took a lot of the data that I got from that day about my swing speed, my my this is, if this is from launch where? angle, last my, week or two weeks. Yeah, ago? and I learned that I'm really coming in like an iron swing with my driver. Yeah, and I really needed to change that, and I needed to just chill the fuck out and hit it on the center of the face rather than try and, and crush swing it. Swing up on it. Yeah, and I was like, man, so like I'm I'm getting these great swing speed numbers. I'm not getting the corresponding ball speed numbers that should come with that swing speed. Why is that? Well, I couldn't freaking hit it in the center of the face all day. And so I bought a heavy shaft, regular stiff. Like not, seven like seventy grams? Yeah. Not seventy grams, not extra stiff, which mm-hmm. every spec fitter says I should have an extra stiff on my driver. But my theory is if I can just take some, take a, just a little off and just make sure I hit it in the center of the face rather than try and fucking pummel it every Basically time. Basically what everyone on the LPGA tour does. Yeah. Good, slow contact. I'm going to kick your ass to the <laughs> summer. But no. Wait, are you making no, fun of me no, or what? I'm you not. Did? No, that was a compliment. Was, oh, was okay. A compliment. So okay. I know what you're talking about. It's like it's like it's like champion store. It's golf. like instead they of just, trying to crush the ball, so, you're just making yeah. good, solid contact. So, so I see all the old guys just like in the champion store. They just swing and okay. That's I a also. Learned, I didn't no, say old guy. Golf. Okay, I watched, right, okay. I watched so it purely for that. I, 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 <laughs> I also learned that I have very high uh, spin, especially when I miss hit it. Mm-hmm. Your angle of attack is crazy high too, right? So yeah, it well it's negative. Yeah, and Not I needed to make it positive. You want it positive, right? And so I ordered the low spin version, which is more of, of what the shaft, the Epic. So it's the Callaway Epic Max LS. The LS is the low which spin. Has, has the weight in the back, right? Um, the movable weight. Yeah. Um, there's something Lower about spin, it. Put it towards the front. The the back. Max versus the Max LS, they I forget what it is, but they, they basically make it much lower spin. Mm-hmm. And I took it to the driving range. I, again, so it's already I'm, in. I've got it. I, oh. I've hit it. Yeah. It's, just, it's only an hour and a half later. He drops and, this bomb. I know. And, and, get a putter. Uh, I, I got to buy something. I need to know. I you want I want to take it out on the course and two. see what it's actually hitting. But I was piping that thing pretty fast. Freaking consistently straight. What are we playing? How's the contact round? Like really solid. Like I just so that day when we went down to exit eight, I was I was averaging like one fifteen swing speed. And impressive. I just need above tour average, by the way. No, it's not. I think tour tour average average is like one twenty, isn't it? No, no, it's like one thirteen. Tour average. No, no, average is like one thirteen or one fourteen. Okay, well, and I was also looking at these guys. Like, I'd love to have Mike Rao here. Because I don't think Mike Rao has a custom like fitted driver. Mike Rao pu- pipes the ball off the oh. tee. And I bet he has the same thing. I bet he has a standard stiff flex stock shaft with whatever tailor made club he has. And he freaking 
He just puts a good swing on it and he really lets the technology do the work. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced if, if I can hit the ball closer to the center of the face, take less swing speed. I was, you can look these up. You can look up like tables on swing speed versus ball speed versus carry. So, and like, it'll tell you like based on swing speed and hitting it on the center of the face, great what the here, ball, right? what the ball speed likely will be and what your carry will be. And what got in my head is the, the guy that was doing the fitting. He's like, man, I had a guy like I had a young kid swinging just as fast as you like last week. And he was carrying it 300 and my all day. Carry? Yeah. Yeah, and he was he was I believe that, yeah. And, but the angle of attack has got to be and, totally different. Right, though. exactly. His angle of attack was up, it was positive, and he was hitting it on the center of the face and getting the right spin numbers. And I was fucking cranking it left right all over just trying Is to crush a- it. And I think if I just hit it in the center of the face with a slower swing speed, it's gonna is it's that gonna a- go. Well, so that was my question for the guy when I did it. Is that a is that a difference of like are we talking about spine tilt angles or are we still talking about club mechanics? It's spine tilt, but it's also like, honestly, you know I mean? honestly, the best way I can, I can describe it is like you have your swing arc and the bottom of your swing arc is like perfectly in between your legs. Yeah. That's the lowest the club will go. When you hit a driver, the ball should be a On few inches back up. ahead of it. Yeah. So as you're, hitting your arc which like a backward you know leading back spine angle it's going to help as you come through into that ball that's teed up off near your front foot right you're going to hit it up right whereas an iron you want to hit down you want to hit the ball first which we all try and fail to do most of the time and then take that divot right because the bottom of the arc is now right where the ball is versus Mm -hmm. off in front of you right yeah Hmm. so this is from Trackman. This I is, could talk about this stuff all day. I, I I feel like I've really started to gather. Well, okay, so like, Trackman knowledge on this stuff. Stats taken from the PGA Tour. Driver average club speed is one thirteen. Angle of attack average is actually negative one point three. Really? That's ball, what I was getting. I was getting like negative one, negative one point five. That's the average. I mean, I I would think that it should still. I don't know, but this is. But from, that's why they're propu- they're pushing higher loft on your driver. That's why that yeah. guy was telling me to hit a 10-5 because I think if I kept swinging with a negative attack, it's giving me the yeah that could be yeah, the sense. launch angle I need if I wasn't going to well, start. The ball speed was 167. Uh, your smash factor was 1.48. Technically, 1.5 is perfect. Yep. That's, um, launch angle is 10.9. Spin rate, 20, just under 2,700. Smash factor is ball speed over swing speed. Um, I'm pretty sure. Ball speed over, I believe you're right. I think the, it's the, the ma- ratio between your ball speed off the club face yes. versus your swing speed. Correct. And the max on a driver's legally is 1.5. Like that's like, that's like a, that's something that drivers cannot get fat. That's why when they tell drivers are like hotter and stuff like that, like it's impossible because they can only come off at 1.5. Like it's, that's actually a limitation um, in club making um, or uh, rules making of it. Max height was 32 yards. So 96 feet. Um, carry was 275 yards. Landing angle was 38 degrees for a driver for a driver coming in. So it has to come in a little bit lower than 40. So when you right. kind of, which is interesting to talk about, cause like when you hit the angle and have it come down, um, three wood, I mean, this is just going in, but the driver I was saying is one, 113 club head speed, negative 1.3 angle of attack. What are they carrying the ball? 275. Three wood driver. So so average. swing speed one fifteen. Said three or wood average is two forty three for hmm. PGA. I don't know what year this is for but swing Rory's speed. Rory's on the cover, so Rory's got the best swing speed in. He's like he's like golf. Yeah. one twenty nine. I think his is. I think when he really. I Bryson. Think, Bryson. I, nobody's, I, ta- nobody's higher than Bryson. Oh yeah, Bryson's up there, but like but he's, he's my, different. No, I mean Cam Cam uh, uh, Champ is another one too. Yeah. He's eating it out there. It's just interesting to like better understand to the point what got us talking about all of this is like to your point, GT, the you start to really understand the numbers and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, okay. Like, how can I manipulate these numbers? Oh, I don't I don't 
if my theory is correct, I don't necessarily have to swing harder to maximize my numbers. I think right. I need to hit the center of the face and maximize the capability of the driver itself and take off a little speed in the swing. Do you guys find that you're, this is probably a little different from you. I bet I'll hit it farther. For you, Rye. For me, though, I feel like I spend the first couple months of the, well, maybe not a couple months, but like the first month of the year is regrooving the swing. Like I spend so much time getting back to where my swing was at the end of the year that like my swing today is going to feel different Yep. Come May fifteenth, yep, because it's it's not there yet. Like we I'm, need year I'm like round a, golf. Yeah, I'm like re remembering how to swing the club the way my body swings the club. I also get sore. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? Like, I was I, sore for a week. Like and seriously, a though, half after my fitting, I did I was, the math. I was wrecked. I did the that. math. I did thirty six so holes sore. of golf. If the only swings you took were seven iron and driver, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> smoke and not only seven like seven iron like he was trying to get like he was his big thing was trying to improve my um altitude on um, with the seven iron but c- make sure that i still had a decent carry distance this is so this, what what sorry. were your swing speeds this i'm curious I, I would have thought you guys brooks is have... negative 3.7 on driver brooks angle of attack on his driver 3.7 he said anything sub five was good Negative sub five. Negative or, sub five or better was good on a driver. On a driver, yeah. He said he want want to get you below negative five or above negative five. I wonder what the- I've always been told. You want to be between like minus one and like plus two on angle attack with your driver. Say it again. You want to be like minus one degree to like plus two on your angle of attack on the driver. What was your angle of attack on? Oh, you didn't do any irons. My angle of attack on my irons was terrible. It was like a minus 14. Oh, are you talking about irons? Is no, that both, different? No, both. Oh. No. Because driver, I have always been told you want that angle of attack to be in the positive. Just, just positive. Not a lot, but you want it to be positive because that's where you really start launching the ball. Hmm. But so this it's is- interesting that these guys are, I mean, we're also talking about like, Microscopic differences in like how the they are, like yeah. when it's that that so number small of, of a difference. So the tor, the tor average is negative one degrees down on your driver, which is which is I always thought it would be up, but it's negative one. Yeah. Um, male amateurs scratch or better is actually negative point nine. Five handicap negative one point one. 10 handicap, negative 1.2. The average golfer, 14.5, is negative 1.8. So bogey golfers is negative So 2. you can 8. see, though, that the, the, the trend towards better golf is closer to a positive. Because Correct. they're... Yeah. It's closer to, yeah, zero. I think, yeah. to go back to your question earlier, what our numbers were, I think my club head speed was around like 105, 105, 106. My On the ball, driver? No, this was on my irons. Oh, that's fast on an iron. And my ball speed was coming out at like one thirty. Okay, I, that's that's really good for an iron. My yeah. thirty. I, he was really because he he switched me to extra stiff for the irons. That's and then by the time we got to the driver, I was just so friggin' tired. That, that makes sense too. Yeah. Um, I I think my my, my set, smash. What was your smash factor? Mine was he was terrible. Training. I wasn't hitting. That's that's what got me thinking. I, it, like the smash factor was terrible because for my swing speed, I was not getting the ball speed that the club was capable. Which of. Which just means bad contact, then. Right. Okay. Because he was getting me from on the irons. He was get. He brought me like when I first started. I was at like a one three, and then he got me up to one point four. That's with great. the irons. Yeah. Which he said, that's exactly where you want to be smash factor wise. It maxes out at one five, which is where the pros are. It's like one that's five. That's like the best capability of the club. Yeah. So he was really happy with that. And then he was just like, how do we get consistency? And that yeah. was the difference between like the players versus the players clubs versus the game out of the game improvement clubs. Yep. He's like, you're just getting a way better smash factor out of the game improvement clubs. Yeah. I mean, I went, I went down, down. I went to a game improvement club. Let's let's not say down. Let's say that's laterally. What I said, that's what I moved laterally. We, we, we moved laterally. I, no, I think it'll be better for me because I, even last year when I was playing, like I've always played the forged iron. Yeah, like the ones I have. So if you look at those, those are like 
they were made when I was playing much better. Um, and I can hit them fairly well, but the thing is, if I miss hit them, then there's significant laps. Well, your like, your your sweet spot is significantly smaller. That's correct. the one thing that I liked when because playing with those players clubs, when I hit them well, the trajectory was better, was the beautiful. altitude was better, yeah. the distance was better. But when I miss hit them, it was terrible. Whereas if I miss hit the game improvement clubs, it wasn't terrible. I mean, it wasn't significantly better than terrible. It was still bad, yeah. but it was like. It wasn't the dispersion wasn't nearly as wide. Yeah. The one thing that I didn't like, I don't know how you guys feel about it. With the game improvement clubs, it's like when you hit when you hit a good shot and you you hit close to the sweet spot of the club, you don't feel the contact at all. It's like it's like a baseball. It's like sweater. Swing. You know what I mean? And I actually whereas when I hit like a good shot with the players' clubs, I still felt the ball coming off the face. That was the only thing I didn't actually like was it it literally felt like you didn't feel like you hit air, but it literally felt like you didn't hit anything. The the uh, the game improvement one too. I was able to hit more of the draw again consistently because that's what you hit naturally too. That's though. my natural one. If I if I'm just I have to work hard to hit a cut. Like my natural draw, my natural is a cut. So my my irons are I can usually hit my irons more solid than my like woods, mm. but it's naturally a draw where my woods I have a hard time getting it to turn over. Like I just I just don't. My, I've always had a hard time keeping my driver going right to left. It's always mm. I've always had a straight or a fade, and then if I hit bad, it's a miss. It's a slice. Like I very rarely, like, oh, and if I overcompensate, I can just hook it. Like I can just pull it right out of bounds. But um, I very rarely have a draw on my irons, or I mean, on my woods or driver. But on your irons, it's consistently more of a draw. Correct. Consistently, and more if of I a draw. miss on my irons, it's typically a hook. Yeah, because I overdraw it. Yeah. So that, that's like I only misses. I only hit and I don't know why. Ryan, you probably know why. Maybe I'm closing the club face fast, closing the club face faster. When I try to like put a lot into an iron shot, that's when I tend to hit more of a, a it starts to hit more of a draw. But in my natural shot, well, you know, my natural shot's a little bit more of a cut. Could have right. been the shaft. That's true. The old shafts were because you went all the way to stiff now. Oh, extra stiff. And you had um, regular the irons. irons. You just had yeah. regular shafts in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? What irons or what? Uh, what shafts did you get for the irons? I don't know. He didn't. I, I. Well, he told me. I just. I just don't remember. Mine actually were the same ones. I had the same from when I was a kid. Wow, that's crazy. Kid, but like we from t- when you were playing good dynamic golds, dynamic golds S three hundred. So we had the same. So I went up to the Project X's Ooh. and I had a couple that I hit, but this was by far the best combo. That was his big thing with like the driver that I bought. He was like, "You really need a different shaft." He goes, "The problem is you're going to pay three hundred dollars to sure. find a new shaft." Versus if you bought a new club for 500 So I was like, I, I just what, I what, what shaft do you have now? I have the Fuji. Is it the Ventus? I think it must so. must be the Ventus. They came out with the, the Ventus 5. I think there's a Ventus 5 and there's a Ventus 7. I think it's the Ventus 5. Uh, is it blue? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Ventus. The, the Ventus. Five. Um, Which no, is a I stiff, think it's the Ventus 7. It's the stiff. Sh- no, I think the Ventus 7 is what I have on my on that new Stealth hybrid that I bought. And that is perfect i i, sw- I swung that club I I again the same one as you know i swung that club again a couple days ago and that thing is i love that club you it's know what it's fantastic i just noticed is my five iron degrees they're so strong that it's actually greater than my four hybrid now it's the more like a three what or a three iron yeah your five iron uh it's it's the about new, a four it's about because you got because you bought the stealth yeah, irons, but right like, it's I think my I think it's twenty one point five on the degrees, which is getting pushing to like a four, where my hybrid's twenty two. So I'm curious to see what the difference would be. Yeah. Because my thing when I'm fitting, it's like my irons are fine. I can hit my five iron about two hundred, but I said like I need my I need my gaps to be good because I need a three. You almost need a th- you almost need a three hybrid instead of the four. Which hybrid. I still have my three hybrid, which I can the M two, which I yeah. So my but my thing is if my if my you, hypothetically, if that new iron, like if I get my old one 200, this one could probably get up to about 210. Maybe if I like, I mean, I'd say 210. So if all of a sudden I hit that, and now my my four hybrids going 215, and I have in a five hybrid, you know what I mean? I have a five yard gap. Your gap is way too small too for that. Small. Yeah, it should so, be 15 yards. So then I'd get rid of the four, and then I'd stay with a three hybrid, which would hopefully get me closer to that 225 mark. And are you playing a three wood still? Yeah, I, I think played, the I've best played a three. Well, Ryan and I talked about this for like an hour. I think the best move that I made, we'll see if it pans out this year, but the best move I made, I think, for this year is switching from a three 
three wood. It's going from driver three wood to really having nothing in between. I I can't, and it's probably a byproduct of the three wood that I had. But I went to a five wood, which I love. So no three wood. I don't have a three wood, a five wood. But I don't hit long with the driver. So I think based on the courses that we play on here. Having a five wood and being able to actually access that and versus, hit it off the ground and hit it off the ground versus what I was doing before, which was driver and then shit, get my four iron out. What That's the th- only thing I can what hit. Do you think, uh, so now I go, I go driver five wood four hybrid, which that thing gives me. So I, I go, I don't know what my distances are on the five wood yet, but they're, they seem like they're strong. I think I've, I think I've filled that gap. So I'm still a little bit. Like long distance, but up here our courses play so short. Like by, I don't think I'm going to get in a pinch. Well, I'm looking at like two two hundred to two fifty because my th- my three wood can it's like maxed out like perfect hit like it's two fifty like if if I can hit perfect it, hit. Yeah. But I mean that like that's what I'm aiming to hit like that's like saying I want to hit my pitching wedge like one thirty five or something. So it's like I'm trying to hit it two fifty, but like it could any it could go two thirty five on a miss hit and it could go. Your two new pitching si- wedges are going to go further than that. Or it could way. go 260. Now it will. But I could go like 260. You know what I mean? So like 250 was always comfortable. But if you have, if you're picking two clubs to go in between, then you're looking at, you know, you want to have those be about 20 yards difference. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got 40 yards there. Yeah. So that's my, my three hybrid. I could get to about 225 to 230, which was like that nice middle ground. That three hybrid is so much fun but, to swing. But then it's like if my, but say my five iron goes. I wish you were right handed, right? <laughs> But if my five iron, that's the thing like right now I got to play with because if this five iron starts going a little bit higher into the twos, then it's, is it just going to def- like take away that, th- that four hybrid or cause I, cause I need, right. Cause I, you got you, cause your new five iron is going to basically replace that four hybrid it, possible. And I bought mm, the four it hybrid. It sounds like it will. So if my, unless if, the weight of it drives the ball up into the air more than you're thinking and, and, it, and it still hits the same distance. But it's just smoother like because I, I, of the I weight would, of the club and the cavity back and everything. Ideally, yeah. if my five iron can go two ten, and then the four hybrid could go somewhere around two twenty to two twenty five. I think that, that would fi- be perfect. I think your five iron is going to go further than that. Five iron, because then my the thing that the thing is, I don't want the I don't I want the new, hybrid to go. I think I your new I think your new five iron is going to go further than two ten. I, I have a feeling I'm going to end up bagging the new four wood hybrid Jesus. I just got. That'd be a smoke. I do not hit my five iron two ten. These new irons, Ryan. Yeah, it's insane. La- la- last year, my my I hit a five seven. Two hundred. I hit a seven. Yeah, one ninety five. A seven. Yeah, th- this is gonna go. But far- that that's um. That was your old clubs, right? No, that's the new clubs. The old clubs was like one fifty nine. Jesus, Holy with a, like shit. a te- was like a ten yard roll out. I was hitting my seven. The new seven irons that we got. I was hitting like 180, well, 189, 187 see, with like I'm, a six or seven yard rollout to 195. See, that's Damn, dude. I'm, see, that's, that scares me though. That that's why I picked too. my. That's why, that's why I picked my pings because um, I I tried some other clubs that um, similarly they they were like you hit it, it's butter, you smoke it. It's like holy shit. But when I hit the pings, it wasn't always like that. But like they would, the distance on the farthest shot to the shortest shot was a lot tighter, and I knew I wasn't gonna like overpower a, an iron. I, but I, I almost stayed with my irons purely for the gap because that's my biggest concern with the new ones is that the gap's gonna be that they're gonna go a little too long because at the end of the day you're trying to just gap your clubs. Like I don't right. care, like I don't care how far I hit my five iron as long as it fits. As long as everything my head. feels good and you can swing. As long it as you got a club for the number. It yeah, right. exactly. And the thing is I think the clubs are going to be more forgiving, but I'm going to have my numbers all spaced out. Do you have a club for your do you feel like your Vokies fit? I know you hate that 120 to 100. So, this is a thing. Do you my, feel like the Vokies fill that void now? So my Vokey my my gap wedge sure. which is a 50. You can have it. My my gap my gap wedge, which is the which is the one, um, my gap wedge goes about one twenty to maybe one twenty five. But my pitching your gap, wedge, and my you have gap, a fifty four degree fifty. That's your gap. Yeah, I got a fifty. Oh, 50. sorry, 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 sorry. Yep. Yeah. So my gap. Mine's a fifty two. Yours a fifty. Yeah. 50. So my gap goes about one twenty to one twenty five. Okay. Hole in one was one nineteen. Spun back, but one twenty. That was with one, the Vokies. Oh yeah, I spun that. That was with gap. I spun. I never asked you about that. Yeah, that was. It's on my plaque. Was that with Lamonto? 
Lamonto and Alec, yeah. It was awesome. it was the the be- one of the best shots I ever hit. Like you know when you hit a shot, so did like, you pure it? I one of the greatest shots I ever hit. It literally felt like butter. I hit it in the way I hit it, and I'm like that thing is spinning back, and it's like that's gonna be tight to the pin. I hit it and was perfect to the point where I hit it. I'm like that if that that could go in, like that felt like a hole in one shot. It was one of the greatest feeling shots I've ever hit in my life. Even Which, with the fact that taking the fact that you got a hole in one out, it's still I didn't was even one of the know greatest. it went in the hole after I hit my shot. I didn't see the ball go in the hole because it was tucked behind the bunker. What hole was it on? Nine. It was tucked behind the bunker, so I shot it. Oh, it was up I, on the upper but level? But I hit this perfect little draw, this little like three, four-yard draw. I could never hold, get a hole in one. on. I mean, I won't ever get a hole in one, but to get a it, hole in one on the top shelf, there's no way. It hit there, and it caught. You might. I'd have to aim at the bunker. It, Jared, it landed like where you were. Basically, if you were hitting this way, it landed where you are, and it spun all the way back to me. Like this thing, if we would have saw it like on the green, and it didn't hit the pin, it probably would have spun off the front of the green with a gap wedge. I hit you had it that a lot cool. of... I, it was the purest shot I probably ever hit in my life. Ball first, baby. Wow. It was every. It was like I just hit it. and I was like, it, MG ball. Can we? Can MG we, with the Kavanaugh, MG logo? With Kavanaugh logo. Can we rename this this like golf podcast? Balls first. Ball first. Ball first. I wish ball that first. would be great. Actually, ball, ball first. first. Ball first. That'd be all a about great tech, podcasting. All about, all about the fundies. Yeah, um, I bought new wedges. Shut the fuck up! Did you really? What'd you get? Two of them. I got two Vokies. Wait, we're Vokies? Just, we just come in clean. I, got, I have not bought anything since the last time. Okay, so, guys, so Galen, I, after I spent... after Okay, no, no, no. I got them custom go ahead. go ahead. Where? I, well, I knew what I needed, and I just At ordered Will, them. Willie? Golf discount. Oh, so you already fitted... You you figured out your yeah everything you needed? Yeah, so I got a... Um, <laughs> What else did you? This guy. I love, Brian, I love Brian so much because he's like the sneaky guy that like he won't say a goddamn word, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he'll nowhere, sh- he'll way, show up. This is- see, normally this wouldn't happen like in this venue. Normally it would be we'd be out on the golf course, and all of a sudden we'd look over and we'd be like, "It's just new." Brian, is that a new putter? <laughs> you know. Okay, but, so what would we get? So it all came from gaps. I have uh, a gap What's wedge, your pitching wedge, gap wedge. That is a fifty. Was that part of the ping set, or yeah, it was a fifty, and I got it part of the ping set. So I got my pitching wedge and my gap wedge as part of the ping set, which so I the, really like. Was the pitching wedge a forty six or a forty four? Do you know? You know what my new one is? What is it? Forty two. Forty three. I think it's a forty four. I but, gotta look mine up. But I know that the gap wedge uh, was a fifty. And they're normally a fifty-two. Yours but, is a fifty, right? My gap is fifty. But so so, and I've always had a fifty-six and a sixty. And same. <clears throat> so I, and my sixty is just worn out. It's like the same sixty that I had in like eighth grade when I was playing. Like just started learning. How is to it play. Cleveland or is it? Yep. Yep. And so I got Vokey, um What is it? SM nine or. Or what is it? The... They're up to the. Are they at the nine already? They yeah. had eight. I think it's a. Nine. I have a seven. I don't. I think it's a nine. Whatever the new one is, I guess. I, I, I'll I, have them forever. I but I, 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 I bumped it. I kept a sixty because I feel like a sixty is really essential, tight to the green. Mm-hmm. And I got it with a. Uh, I forget which grind it was. Wait, but so you the, got a? Wait, you have a sixty? A sixty. Okay, I'm looking up right now. Oh, I and, like those. And Nines. I got and I got a really tight uh grind with low bounce. What uh what what finish? You got dual chrome, didn't you? Yeah. You you're always classy guy. I always get brush steel. I love the brush I steel. The, I, I like would have gotten the brush steel, I but like the they didn't have them. Too. Well, you know they why the brush them. steel for me is the glare. I don't like the glare off the club. Do you guys like the the metal st- the, or the the black finish? No. Have you no. ever played with the black? And it finish? wears out. It the wears bla- out. The problem shows- with the black finish is it does wear out on the yeah. club face. And it wears out on the bounce on the bottom. I, I've yep. always had darker wedge colors. Like my current ones are brushed steel, though. They're definitely- I like the- I would never go lighter than the I would I like the brushed the steel the best, but they didn't have them. So I got the I got the chrome. But oh, so I got sorry, a sixty and then I got a fifty four with a high bounce. Fifty four so high what's bounce, the, sixty what's with the, the bounce. What's the so you got a fifty four with so twelve degrees? A, fi- a 54, so I'm going... With what or, what degree bounce on the 54? This is the hardest thing that I have. I think with, it was... It was either... It's either 12, 12 or 14. Holy okay. shit. Yeah. 14? So my... 
my because old- because the high bounce will assist you with a full swing shot. Mm-hmm. So you don't right. chunk the freaking wedge. Also and, soft ground. And you don't and dig soft into ground, soft ground. And you'll bounce off See, the ground rather than dig into it. Honestly, and so I was always sitting there with my 56. First of all, all of my other irons are 0.75 inches longer. And then I go to a stock 56 oh, and yeah. 60. Oh, wow. You're and I'm trying to swing you go a 56. From, you go from Jim Furyk down to... Uh, so yeah. Did you get them custom length? A little bit yeah. longer? Okay. Nice. So I got a 54. Now the Keegan. Coming you're, you're in with <laughs> a... Keegan set, style. Yeah. And I got the shafts <laughs> um, to match the rest of my set. I got everything like set. And uh, I'm thinking with a 54, a longer shaft, uh, and the high bounce, I'll be able to actually take a full swing from like 100, 120, that range, and not chunk it not so you have to worry wedges. about topping it wait and you have a pitching wedge and then a 54 then a 60 i have a pitching wedge a gap wedge and this will bring in a new sand wedge at a 54 and a 60 oh wow that's a big gap wait, between what, your what? sand and your gap or and, sand I strategic- and, your lob wedge. and i strategically did that because once i'm inside 100 yards i'm using my Sa- sand wedge i'm sand wedge all day and i'm, I'm never the type of golfer to swing a 60 from distance. I will always swing the 54 or the 56, like, and I'll open it up if I need to, and but 50, like, what's and your, your 50, 50? My gap is a 50. And your but, 54 is 12 degrees or is it 14? You said it's a, it's got a 12 bounce, I think. 12. Yes. Okay. That's, that's mine. Okay. Mine's 56, but with a 12. Okay. So, so you're, but you're, that's the hardest thing is I have the to ping run, still. To, yeah. And then, okay, and then so you only have the two Volkies that yeah. are okay. So the fifty four at twelve, my old fifty six Mizuno was a thirteen bounce. My my current one's a 10, 54, 10. There's but an I, interview with Tiger coming back to the Masters. The whole we got to bring it back there. The whole know. point. Uh, no, I like this other stuff every, so much right every, now. Every every amateur should play high bounce club. Yeah, high bounce wedge. He's like he's like I don't care like what your comfort zone is. He's like every amateur should play a high bounce wedge. And I took a gamble with my 60 being a very low bounce because I know that I need to be able... Usually when I play my 60, it's on a very tight uh, lie. We have a lot of like greens around this region that like the ground is really hard. And you got to be able to get that club face, that leading edge down underneath the ball really quickly. So a low bounce is higher risk because you got to have a good swing on it. But like that's the type of club you need to get underneath... In a in a tight around the so green. that's so my so I've got both I'll have a high bounce wedge and a very low bounce wedge one for picking the ball mm-hmm. off a tight lie and one for swinging which I think is the difference. which I think is the argument for this area is in the early spring through mid summer especially at bluff the higher the bounce the better because it's just so goddamn wet here yeah but once mm-hmm. you get past like say july 20th all of a sudden the water just seems to disappear from the courses and all of a sudden that high bounce your margin for error because of the high bounce is i mean i mean granted this is me you know i'm sometimes when i chunk the ball it's because you know that that later in the year it's not a chunk anymore it's you're now hitting a really bad shot because you have no earth to dig into anymore to, to forgive that, that higher bounce. So it's almost like we need to carry two sets of bounces. I've actually kept my, in the same wedges I've kept, in this area for beginning of the year and the end of the year, or just split them kind of like I did. Cause I, I'm not made of money. You know, yeah. I'll just get. Well, sometimes you just keep your old clubs. You look like money, though, baby. Thanks, baby. That's <laughs> half the battle. I think. I think when you take a, when you take like a, like I said, the one I one have thirteen, even though it's a fifty six. Like you'd still, sh- you could still shift it in the bag and still like if it was oh, really sure. right beginning of the year and translate. Yeah, like fourteen putters. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just rotate it around, have, baby. I have one sand wedge and I use it for like ten times more shots than I'm supposed to use it for. I love that club. The tailor made. That tailor made. Just got it. That comfort. I'm really pumped up some Vokies though, but it, Vokies are nice. I'm dealing with the uh, the economics of it. It's probably not going to be here for a couple months. I, you know. Oh yeah, just because you're dealing with, it. yeah. See, that's the thing is like with the new Mizunos, I I they convinced me to add a gap wedge to it, which puts me at I think I go 44 to 49. The gap wedge is a 49, but then I'm I'm a 56 
with the current TaylorMade. So I was considering going, do I look at new TaylorMades or do I look at Vokies and go 54, 58? Because I was going to do a 58, good. but I pulled the trigger on a 60 last minute because I, I, knowing my game, I need a high loft wedge really close to the green and I'll never be, I'm not filling a gap at that point. Right. You feel like the you know, 60 when you're gives you getting within benefit. that close to the green, I'm not filling like a yardage gap. I'm filling a, a, a type of well, shot that I need. Well, the other thing too, is you're so good with that, with that sand wedge that you feel confident with that in your hand, that the 60 degree is literally designed for those shots right. that, you know what I can do what a 58 does with my 56, but I cannot do what a 60 degree does with my 56. Like it's, exactly. I, I can't open it up enough to ever compliment myself for what a 60 does. So it makes sense. Yep. I mean, you know, your game. I, I, I concur. No, I agree. I, I love wedge game. I could I, probably talk about wedge game all day. You know what long. I was thinking about the other day because I've been nerding out about the <laughs> this fuck. I love. It's probably my favorite part of the game guy. is wedges. wedges. I think. I, love wedges. I think that's the only reason that I can compete with you guys is because of my wedges. Yep. Freaking yeah, wedges. it's the only reason. Oh, I thought you were freaking talking about leave shit. the pin you're, in. You're serious. Leave, I'm serious. Oh. Leave leave the pin in and chip it in all day. Just freaking. I mean, I've been a douchebag <laughs> in my day. <laughs> just, I've definitely said some things that I shouldn't have said, but. Um, and chip things that are coming off the practically the hosel, but I don't know what I did to deserve you chipping <laughs> in that. Ho- <laughs> Couldn't you have just seen the pain I went through and the effort? Oh, which one to, for the kids? Oh my god, that we ha- I had the man before, before you give the, the whole story. Uh, Oh, I just want to say God. where I was on that. I was down underneath the scoreboard grabbing my shank shot that I hit over the green, so I didn't, ever, I didn't actually see it go in. All I saw was Bryce go up, whis- whisper sweet nothings in your ear, and then you yeah, see something like in. you got it, and, and you were like, Bryce, yeah. Bryce Ryan, came over and didn't he didn't say he didn't say two words really. I mean, he came over and he goes, uh, "You like, like where you're at?" Yeah, he's like, "You like the club in your hand? Love it." He goes, "Yeah, you got this," and then he walked away. That was all he said. It's like, yeah, but it was like exactly what you needed. And then just so for everyone that's played North Country, obviously we're on number nine and I'm in the front right on the fringe. Could, I mean, technically puttable. And his but partner was over in the scoreboard. My, par- far my, back partner, the my partner was <laughs> gone. I absolutely would have putted that. But and this is your game. man. And you Ryan could, was oh back left of the green. I was I up on that top. Up on that, that top shelf, which is a top, really uh, tough putt. It was it was a putt. Yeah, I was on the fringe, but it was not good. It very very low chance of going in. <laughs> margin of error, very slim, very slim margin yeah. of error. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so just took out the trusty old fifty six, and had a good line. I had the that was the thing is like you guys ever you guys ever been sitting over a putt or over a chip where you're just like all of a sudden. Uh, to me, in my head, it's like I'm playing Tiger Woods 2001 all over again, and I'm watching like the line that they put on the green. Yeah. And in my head, that line all of a sudden appears on the green, and I'm like, oh, shit, if I can hit that line, that's going in. All yeah. of a sudden, that line just hit in my head, and I'm like, okay, if I can hit this, yep. and bump, so bump, hit the chip, bump, and, bump. Yeah, so and, that just, thing yeah. just, and that thing just started rolling, and I was like, that's yeah, that's it. Game over. Um, <laughs> and then Ryan, Ryan acted like I pissed in his Cheerios. Well, well I, mean. I I acted I acted like I still had a chance to tie the match because I was like, oh, well, you I still have the last single handedly. Yeah, I There's, was like, oh, I can still I have the last putt here. But I remember Bryce like came over and he like looked at me and he it was kind of like without any like <laughs> actual communication, just I kind of like eye contact. I think we both looked at each other and were like. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you single hand. I mean, credit where credit is due. That is a vi- that is an almost impossible putt from the top of the green on nine. Yes. Trying to hit, like no way, no, no. way. Yeah. You always have flag, to be south of the hole. In, yeah, but we would have we would have we would have pushed right had you made the putt. Yeah, at best, yeah, yeah. yeah. We would have we would have tied the whole the whole match. Yeah. Okay. Back to the Masters. We had to wrap this up soon, considering right. that we haven't done anything but. No. Talk about Look, clubs and people Tiger are going to hate this. Is that, there anybody hey, still told, listening out there? Or? Oh, God, no. no. We told him. Okay. Um, Maybe Scott Cutare. Scott Cutare likes to listen to these. Scott, 
My high school. Oh, we should have Scott come on this. Oh, that'd be great. Scott high school great golf course. coach, best best. Scott, sorry, coach listening. I've ever had, honestly, in high school sports. Scott, really? seriously, he used to put us through. Uh, Scott, I hope you're listening. Maybe Scott this will is, come on the post PGA major one. Next I month. remember the U.S. Open or no, the PGA. PGA's first so, PGA so, spring sports. We'll do that. I'll see if Scott will come on. That'd be spring good. spring sports Four start in, in March ish, right? Golf does not start in March around here, no. but spring sports do. Scott Guter put the golf team through a rules test, and in order to be on the team, you had to pass the rules test. You had to get like a yeah. He gave that. us a rules test, so when we would compete with other schools, like we knew the rules, right? And then he would also put us through jump camp. He like, put you through jump camp, like we do awesome. all these like indoor, you know, ab workouts and like. He's like plyos. Back, back yeah. when plyometrics were a big thing. We, I touched more medicine balls playing golf than I did with any other sport. <laughs> Better medicine it's than like, other balls. Yeah, yeah, you know. But Scott, thank you. That was like, that was an incredible experience. I still play golf today. Obviously, also right? with so, the, uh, you always talk about the bounce back and like the ball, the balls for getting the bounce back, like after bogeying or something, coming back in par or better. Yes, yeah. Scott, he did that too. That was like the best mental game. Ever. He used to do a uh, incentive. I think he'd give out like a sleeve of golf balls or a case of golf balls. Oh, right. A, you get so an extra. You, it, yes. When we were like every day after school for golf, like the best sport ever, you, you go to school and then you go play nine holes. Then you go to school, you play nine holes like every single day for free. Like it's part of the program. And so if you during those do it over again, during those practice rounds, if you had a bogey or worse, and then you followed it up with a par or better, you got a comeback point. Yeah. And like the person with genius. the most comeback points in a certain period of time, like you might have done one every week or one every couple of weeks, but you got a prize and everybody knew about it. So it really incentivized you to just like that's get your shit together and like, oh, like I can get a comeback point here because I just got a freaking triple on six. Well, he was know? also the one that incentivized you to take irons off the tee. Too, yes. Right? Yes, he would. So if you got in trouble in school, he would. He would, <laughs> Scott, I, re, I really hope you're listening. I remember we had some hooligans I'll on t- the I'll team. I'll text him. I'll be, you gotta, he you he, he, uh, he used to gra- He used to bring sandbags. You probably can't do this today. <laughs> he used to grab sand- <laughs> sandbags. I remember this like it was yesterday. Never happened to me, I don't think. But he would have you carry sand. If you got in trouble in school, he would uh, put sandbags in, in your, your golf bag. Oh shit. Little sandbag, like little, like you know, like uh, like school? cornhole or yeah, size yeah, thing. Yeah. But they got heavy, yeah, and a like, couple couple extra pounds. You'd have to carry that through your practice, and it was like that's okay. That's your medicine. Like don't don't mess up in school again. Um, that's brilliant. But, but then he would also like we'd have no idea it was coming, but we'd like get together for the team part before we all go play our round for the practice that day, and he'd be like, okay, guys, uh, five iron, eight iron wedge and we're like what he's like you're allowed to take your five iron your eight iron and your wedge and your putter and like that is what you're playing your round with today and we all shoot lower scores yeah well it was that adirondack too which was beneficial yeah right? but like it's like yeah. for a high schooler think about it like you just want to get up and crush the ball yeah that's course and he, like, management without teaching down. you course Ryan, management how come we haven't taken any of this with you oh my god years? what happened you know but um swing speed driver yeah scott i hope you're listening best fix, fix right best swing. time of the of meanwhile ride still man. grip it and rip it baby <laughs> you know it you know it uh, uh four man scramble let me, <laughs> let me swing first see what happens right yeah you never swing we, we first. All, we, all either, we all either uh, put our clothes back in the bag or step up and hit shout out, equally bad shots. Shout out to Mitch Ryder. I wonder where he is these days. He used to, he he and I went up through the program together, and he could hit the ball pretty. He's he a strong could, kid, right, Mitch? Yeah, oh yeah, and I've I haven't seen him in a while, but I've heard I've heard from people that he comes. He's here every once in a while in the summer. And, I mean, I see um, Denise a lot. I just don't. Yeah, Denise, Denise. Uh, oh, Ryder's oh, son. gotcha. Okay, yeah, gotcha. and. Uh, I guess he's he's put on a lot of muscle and he's he's fucking cranking the ball now. Bryson baby. cranking it. Like Bryson, yeah. Maybe not but like Bryson, but like he's <laughs> I remember Does he have back his card? in high school he could he could crank the ball. Yeah. Does he have his card? But, his amateur card? I don't know. But we're all gonna have our amateur card. I hope so. 
You gotta qualify, qualify for the qualifier. Qualify. You gotta qualify. That for the is qualifier. the hat I want. We gotta get qualified for the qualifier. So, so, so before we, uh, how about just a hat that says qualified? Sorry, I just totally <laughs> big, like like the big. Thing. No, it totally or... derailed your your closing no, here for no, the no, podcast. No, we're, like, we got. I mean, we still got to discuss who we thinks who we think's gonna win here. So, actually, last thing I want to say about the pairings is that this is the final. So this is for tomorrow night, like primetime golf. Here's your last one, two, three, four, five groups. Yeah. They're good groups. Abraham Answer and Terrell Hatton and Sam Burns. Not huge names, but really good players right now. Mm-hmm. Then Dustin Johnson, Billy Horschel, and Colin Morikawa. Colin. Then Will Zaltoris. That is a, that is, that's an the, incredible group. Yep. Yes, but then it gets better. Will Zalatoris, Pat Cantlay, and group. John Rahm. That's the group I want to watch. That's going to be a really good group. Then Jordan Spieth, Victor Hovland, and Xander Shoffley. And then the final group out, Matty Fitzpatrick, Brooks Kepka, and Corey McElroy. <laughs> That's your last five groups. Prime time, baby. I can't. How did Matty pull that group? Matty Fitz, baby. Yeah. Uh, USAM. Five USAM? Foot, five foot four. USAM champ. Oh, I... I I'm thinking recently. I'm like, he's been no. on the freaking pro tour for years no. now. And they're showing, see they're that showing video him hitting a wedge with a choked Tyrell Hatton that he hit the fairway that was like a foot wide or something. On, oh, yes, yeah. I did see that. Sorry, on the, I'm on the, digressing here like big time. The, uh, I just can't. Uh, the runway? Was it Dubai yeah. or something? Yeah. He's a that's good crazy. golfer. But holy um, shit, it's Imagine a hitting a, a fairway that's only like a foot wide. But the, never. Do you know? I, I would put money against me. You know how? I couldn't do that with my putter. No, there's no way. Yeah. But um, no, that maybe those my are sand group. Maybe my sand. Those are great groups. Did you see the thing when they they were because uh, he has an um, anger issue, Tyrell Hatton? Like, he's just have like, you seen that group? Um, the thing, the video on YouTube of him like leading the, uh, I forget who does it. It's like Ian Poulter and a bunch of like English guys that do this um, this bit where they're all getting together and it's like anger management counseling. <laughs> no, that's great, dude. And he's in it. Holy shit! Just Google like. European tour anger management, and I bet it'll pop up. It is freaking hilarious. It, I think I, I don't know what tournament it was, but it was this year. But they were asking him before he teed off, like when he's on the practice range, maybe the players, and they're asking about his anger, and he's, he's kind of like laughing, and they're like, "So, how far could you throw a club?" He's like, "I don't know, 40, 50 yards." He's like that far? He's like, "Yeah, it's not that far, right?" And he's like, he's thinking about actually chucking a club, and he was serious about it. I'm like, this guy. If you ever look at this guy, he's like a. He looks like he just came out of a bar, like a little a guy ready to fight coming out of a bar. Yeah. Right? Chin strap, kind of beard. He's he, English, looks like he looks like he's little... from Manchester and he's fucking scrappy. Yeah. He's like yeah, it looks like he's about he's looks like he's in an English gang. Yeah. So but can like, play golf. Don't like, don't fuck with Manchester but, United because I will beat your ass. But he's top ten player in the world, I believe. Right? Tyro. Oh, Is he really? Oh yeah, I think so. He's up there. Yeah. I I want to say he's like number eight or something. Um, that's impressive. We're official world golf. You've got ranking. you've got to watch that. You've got to watch that video. What do you though. think it's, it's like to management. be to be a guy playing the Masters uh, he's, and he's be like so low on the totem pole, but you're like just thankful to freaking be there? Just and, to like, get the invitation, I would. Well, I'm a I'm an absolute pussy. So if I got the invitation, I would. I cry. I cry for freaking anything. It'd be incredible. Have, have three kids and you cry for anything. These I'd days, also be the guy that like makes the. I would the, cry the, the highlight reel for never being invited back because I'd like chunk the T box or something and like just ruin. They're like, okay, you're not you're not allowed to be here. So anymore. that's the one thing that I've never I've played competitive sports. The one thing I've never done, which is what's probably the most enticing about trying to enter the amateur, is competitive golf. I've never played competitive golf. Best ever. It's it's fun. Oh my god. Competitive golf like is the on best ever. It's fun. Ever. I haven't. Done, he played way more than I did because I, didn't I will team. play competitive. Oh my god, I crave to play competitive golf. That's what got you me can, going. Well, you can tell. It you also play better cha- with, well, like, it channels something different in you. Like you guys have it. I know you do. You're both competitive guys. You both are great golfers. You just gotta channel it. You know, like you channeled it when you chipped that putt. That. Uh, that shot it's in on nine. Them. You did that. You channeled it. You looked. The, the, you the, had the tiger vision, like you said. You know, like it sounds funny cheesy, is, but like it's true. You you get in this mind space with competitive golf that like every single shot matters. Matters. Yeah. And like, there's something you, really 
you typically and cool about the, that. The closest I've ever gotten, too, I think. the closest I've ever gotten to competitive Focus. golf, and like what, when you say channel, it reminds me of when I went to Arizona like three or four years ago. With Capasca, and yeah, with Capasca, and uh, we were at this course. I can't remember the name of the course. It was so weird. We're in Arizona, and then you walk in, all of a sudden the trees just sprout up out of nowhere. It feels like you're in South Carolina. And we were on this, we were on this course, and this guy started grilling us for how slow we were playing. And I got so fucked. I don't know why. You know me. I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the golf course. I'm having the time of my life. I don't ever get mad. I think golf's the most relaxing thing in the world. I got so pissed off at this guy because he was so mad that we were slow that I just went on a fucking tear. I went par, birdie, 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 par to finish the round because I was so mad. And you guys were playing from the tips, if I remember. When we were playing yeah. from the tips. And I, I, and this guy had no idea. <laughs> At the end of the round, he's on the tee box, and I turn around and I go, how's that for slow golf, you fucking asshole? <laughs> You yelled to the guy? Yes. See, I was this is so what I'm saying. He, mad. He, could, he could qualify for the qualifier. <laughs> he could do it. He, he, if, he ha- if he really I didn't wanted know that to, was, he could. I didn't know that was in me anymore. You know me. Like Alec. We go golfing with Alec. He gets so pissed off. And I'm like, bro. Every time Alec gets mad when I golf with him, I, I go, dude, it's a Thursday afternoon. This is We're true. at Bluff Point. It's 75 this is degrees very out. True. Know your audience and your timeline. <laughs> or what, like know the what time of day. What could be and, wrong yeah. with the world right now? Yep. You're about to break your wedge over your knee. <laughs> is it really worth it? I'm like I'm like the the conscious mind inside Alex's head. You just got to play more of Scott Coda. You'll be fine. <laughs> That's what I do on Wednesdays. True. Like we're here. True. We're just playing. break the just break the driver when you're actually trying to play golf. That's it. But we're we're. Just, I love playing with Coda because I know you he don't. Plays fast. <laughs> no, I love playing with Coda too. I do. I do. That, that was that was meant one to off be. situation. It was meant to be. Yeah, I love playing with Coda because and well, I got matched up. Coda and I got matched up at, at for the kids. I love playing with Coda because it's decision, pick the club, hit the hit the shot. Dude, That's Wednesday it. mornings, yep. I love it. We 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 fly through. It's great. So I'm I'm replacing Alec basically for. And and Rye probably replacing Alec a little bit too Wednesday morning. Yeah, Wednesday morning. I mean, we can have more people. We can have more than one group too. That'd keep it fresh too. If we get like six guys and just kind of yeah. rotate, and play two threesomes. I can't wait for that though. I want. That's my big goal is to play. Just play a lot more golf this year and play more with it. Well, we make it like a morning league. Kids. Honestly, well, we Wednesday yeah. we play very consistent. Like it was. It, we only. I didn't know Lamonto takes. I talked to Hannah. Lamonto takes Wednesdays off. Oh, because he? of golf. Uh. Oh, I thought he went back in for the second half of the day. He does, but she says he basically, you know, Wednesdays are kind of sacred. If he goes in, he goes in. If he doesn't, he doesn't. It's kind of like my Fridays. It's kind of, it's exactly yeah. like your Fridays. Like Fridays, I might end up playing golf in the morning just to get an extra round in, but then I have like the rest of the day to kind of, like I tee off at six in the morning, so you can kind of like putter around. The, you're done by nine, yeah, 9.30, so it's like normal work day. You asked a question before, when's the first round we're going to get in? I would imagine it's next week. Very soon. My problem is Bluff's just, like, open. Like, getting the time like maybe mm. fr- like friday i can't so it's like mine ends up coming down to probably next week or I'm getting down. back down the wednesdays like early but then i don't know what time the problem is it's like early morning right now it's kind of cold so like i'd rather to be honest go hit the range in like the afternoon and just wait for the weather to get better that's kind of my thing i can't play until it's early in the morning like it's just so hard to go out like can we talk about the fact that ryan sneaky bought like three new clubs without saying a goddamn word <laughs> To any of us, and then just dropped it. I know what I need. I just know <laughs> just, what I need. I, <laughs> I, like, I know the numbers now, and I know what I need. But then so just, obviously, right. Laura is not going to listen all the way to this deep in the pocket. No. Nah. <laughs> but, but then he just, nah. but the way he just dropped it was just nah. like, so I got two wedges. I'm like, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> got a driver. I got two wedges. Anything else? The new bag. Delivery is key, boys. Um, all right. So, all right. Let's wrap this baby yeah, up. Yeah, let's okay, wrap it up. If, if there's fu- one listener left, Scott Cutare, thank you. And and uh, like, okay, so and Alec Anaha, <laughs> who's your pick? Live, let's let's end it with our pick. What are we doing? Are we doing? You want to do t- pick and then dark horse or top three? How do you guys want to play this? Oh man! Well, we Jeez. all let's just put it this way: we all say Tiger, so let's get that out of the way. As our dark horse, Let, let's just say Tiger. We've all said Tiger, so that we can feel good about it, and then we can go beyond Tiger. Man, I don't know. I think 
I, I here's my thing. I wish we could pick a okay. top ten and see how it went. I want it was fantasy. What's I this? want Tiger to win. Absolutely. Tiger's playing, so that's great. I think. I think um, there's a Masters fantasy. I saw that. Ooh, man, JT hasn't been playing that great though. I really no, want to see JT I, win, but I don't, I don't think he's gonna. Your past champions got to be Tiger. I would love to see. Oh man, if Tiger's in it, he needs to win. You know, but if he if he's out early, so then my, my heart says I don't, Tiger. My yeah. heart says Tiger, but um, I'm gonna pick like. I was going to say Cameron Smith. Mm. I, that's why I'm like really. I think heavy Cameron on. Smith is going to win if Tiger doesn't. You know, so I don't know if this is much of a dark horse. Scotty's got a chance, dude. Scotty's playing great golf, and Scotty was in it in the past, wasn't he? I think Corey Connors is going to be in the top 10. He's just playing really well right now. I know it was like a boring comment after everybody just dropped some big names, but. Um, Yeah, I don't know. We should have prepared this before. Well, now the send off on this podcast is the, not pro- the problem is I don't. <laughs> there's no one that I feel. So who I think is probably going to win this year is. <sighs> uh, it's so hard. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go outside of what you guys are saying. I think Rambo has a good chance of winning this year. Nah. I think he's going to be. Maybe that's even. Call I, me. Call me an idiot when he does win, but I don't. I don't know. I think my dark. What, is this you got to look for people on the upward is this trajectory. A, is and this Rom's a, not on an upward tra- yeah, trajectory? Yeah, but he's right got now. a he's got a really good. Maybe he's the dark horse. So well, then maybe I should reverse it. You know, because I was going to say dark horse. It's maybe not. Is Joaquin Neiman? You know, what I have a feeling about Shane Lowry. That Open Championship. Oh my! And he has, he's a God. good. He's always up there. But you know who I actually thinks my dark horse, who's not a dark horse, is Rory, who has not contended in a while. If Rory I, won, I would be if ecstatic. If, if ecstatic. that would be the best. If it's Sunday, the best Tiger. Alter- so the best okay. alternative to Tiger. Okay, yes. let's let's put it. Let's do this. It's Sunday at the Masters, and Rory is leading, and Tiger is in the same group, and he's in second. Done. <laughs> oh done. That God. might. I just done. got. I just got chills. I did too. Oh. I got. I got to get a tingle. That. That done. Oh. You know, just because of that, I'm not even gonna look at the rest of the leaderboard. My my pick no, is Tiger Rory. Yeah, I don't care. Let's leave it at that. And it's purely from heart. I really, purely hope that from my happened. heart. Tiger, yeah. Tiger Rory, and I got. I got to sprinkle a little JT in there because I love. I love JT so oh. much. Final. So final I, group. So Rory, I, Tiger, JT. They're all in it. So if I was actually going by mind, like actually brain power, I'm thinking Cam Smith and or Colin Morikawa. Colin would I uh, okay? That's the that's the if other one that my, I would be my, really excited. If I'm for going if, with like thinking kind of thing, but my heart says Tagger and Rory. And I'm going to leave it at that. Let's just put that out to the and universe. that's a review. Um, and Will Zalatoris and Colin Morikawa. I could get down with my, that. My my brain says Colin and or Cam Smith are my two picks. But I'm picking Tagger with Rory in the final group. I I really do think Joaquin Neiman has a really good chance. Chilly, baby. It's getting chilly in here. <laughs> but God, Tiger. A dad joke. Tiger and Rory on yeah. on the on eighteen and the crowd. Tied walking comes, up the hill on 18. Walking up the hill and the crowd comes in behind them. Both have a putt to win it. Oh, my God. Rory goes first and misses and Tiger drains it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just, yep, yeah, I just came. <laughs> All right. All right. On that note, um, Tiger Woods, final answer. All the way around. Final answer. Okay. Masters start soon. Um, oh, also, shout out to some past champions not playing. Tommy Aaron. Never heard of him. Charles Cootie. So these guys are all alive at this point because they're still getting invitations. Ray Floyd, Jack Nicholas, Craig Stadler, the Walrus, Fuzzy Zeller, Jack Burke Jr., Ben Crenshaw, Trevor Immelman. I'm surprised he's not playing. Mark O'Meara, Tom Watson, Angel Cabrera, who I believe is in prison in a South American. No, is that right, Ron? Was at one point. Arrested? That might be true. Can we talk about Anthony Kim for a second? Ni- oh, wait. Don't open that can. Away. I gotta go. <laughs> Nick Faldo, <laughs> Nick Faldo, Phil Mickelson, Gary Player, and Ian Woosnam are not playing. 
Gary Player is out because of what his son did. So apparently at the Masters, Gary Player the sponsorship know, thing. Yeah. So Gary yeah. Player always does the the main tee. It's him, Jack, Jack. and well, it was um, Lee Elder. Uh, no, it was Arnold Palmer. Well, Lee, Lee Elder, Elder was, passed Lee away, Elder but he was, was there last year. Yeah, yeah, Lee Elder was last year, but it was it was uh, Arnold Palmer prior to that in 2020, or was it last year? Maybe it was last year. So his son Wayne, um, while Gary was teeing off, the camera panned to him, and he tried and he and he put up like some golf company that he's part of, like golf balls or some something like that. Put it on camera, and that um, he's banned from the Augusta grounds from here on out crazy shit dude Augusta so I wish player, we spent more time so, talking about Augusta because that place is like the freaking that's like Oz so there's so many things that happen there that so, we just don't know about so Gary players not playing because of that I believe well no 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 no, no. Gary, like Gary player Gary player doesn't play because he he he's takes older. yeah he just gets the but he's, uh, but he's not hitting the first shot because of that but I don't think he's allowed to hit the first shot anymore I could be. Wrong. I would be. I doubt that. I could be wrong, because I just saw. A no, I. I think. I think Jared's right. I mean, so he's not hitting. We'll the see what happens. First shot. I. I don't. I think he got. There was a bunch of shit around that. that though. I. In it, I think. It, yeah. I think yeah. You're right. I think it was last year. Really? Yeah. Who hits the first shot? at The Masters. I. It'll be Jack. Really? Wait, it'll, be, it'll. It'll at least be Jack. Well, Jack, yeah, but I miss Arnold Palmer. I don't know. Do they have anything else? Do you see anything? In 2022, two-time Masters champion winner Tom Watson was named an honorary starter, joining Nicholas and Palmer on the first tee at Augusta National. But Palmer's dead. Palmer, what the fuck? Are th- who's who's putting that out? Palmer's been dead for three years. Gary Player. Um, in 2002, two-time ma- Masters winner Tom Watson was named an honorary 2002? starter. 2002? 2022. 22. Joining Nicholas and Palmer on the first tee at Augusta. Okay, whoever's putting that out is Golf an Net, idiot. Golf News? Yeah, that's not right. First tee shot. This was d- three months ago. So that'll I, be... And there's a picture of Jack and Arnie, which, I mean, do your homework. I love, I, it, okay. Oh, no. At the 2022 Masters, Jack, Nicholas, Tom Watson, and Gary Player will serve as honorary starters. Okay, so Gary's still going to hit it. Yeah, there was some shit with his son Wayne. I uh, saw it. I saw it a couple weeks ago. I there, never. I didn't know I that. Saw, I saw that come up. Um, if you old guy golf, though, of the of those people, don't you think Arnie's the one you want to play? Like, if you could just do a, a yes. two sum matchup, it's Arnie, right? Arnie. Between which one, Gary, Jack, and Arnie? Just. Every, I mean, honestly. Every, well, I mean, maybe Bobby Jones, but, but. I think Arnie would be the most fun and the best to play with. He seems like the most down, like just all the stuff that you see historically, Arnie seems like the best person to play with. He's like the best of, he's like Tiger and Harry in one player. Wait, um, what is Mark player wrote? Who's Mark player's son? I don't know. It's Wayne. The guy's name is Wayne. Anyway, well, the we're, golf we're, ball's directly behind. Long story short, GT needs to close this podcast, and we can talk about this off air. Wow. Okay. So, f- folks, yeah. So we just went. I I didn't know that, but yeah, it's some Vero or something. All he's doing is just holding it up like this. Like, like I don't see why that's such a big. He held it because he knew he was on camera. I know. Yeah. But like maybe just because he was the starter. yeah, but he's the hit. Gary's the starter, and he's the caddy, and he used it to. That's his. Well, yeah, That's he's his company, his, though. Oh, he's holding it like that. Yeah. Kind of a douchebag move. But uh, we haven't closed. Okay. So that's it. We're ending there. Um, go, Tagger. Anything else? We good? Go, Rory. Fair enough. We're out. Thanks for listening to the Galen Trombley Show. If you want to reach me, you can go on Facebook at Galen Trombley, on Instagram at Galen Trombley, and on YouTube at Galen Trombley. The spelling G A E L A N. T-R-O-M-B-L-E-Y.